Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another lovely Saints game day. We have so many stacked games tonight, so it's going to be a good one. Once again, I'm your host for Day Mathias, also known as Mathias, and today I'm joined by Patrick Smoke Chambers. How you doing? I'm doing really, really good today, Mathias. You know, we got a lot of Overwatch and COD coming up, which we'll talk about the matchups in a second, but a huge day, uh, especially for Overwatch. We'll touch on that in a few. What are our matchups today? Yes, we do have a lot of good matchups today. First on the docket here is going to be our NACE uh, Overwatch 2 St. Clair College Academy versus St. John's University. And that's going to be in the NACE Varsity League. But that's not all we have today, folks. We have a 7.30 COD CCL St. Clair College uh, Varsity Team versus Concordia which is also going to be a very, very good game. I believe that's Concordia University at St. Paul as well. So that's the full name. And then we also have a, at 8.30, NACE Overwatch to the St. Clair varsity team is going to be also having a match versus Concordia St. Paul. Uh, I think I got the <laughs> wrote something wrong down there, but my bad. <laughs> and good. then we have for final... The final matchup today, we have at 9, CCL COD, St. Clair Varsity versus Eastern Michigan University. Right, and just remember that that, uh, that third matchup is against Rochester. Yes, uh, that, my bad. I think I, was, yeah. <laughs> I wrote down the wrong thing. RIT. So, my bad. Yeah, that's going to be what our third matchup is about. But without further ado, let's talk a little bit of Overwatch. Obviously, huge day today. It's patch day. And with a new season on the horizon, we obviously need to talk about some of the changes that are going to be made. Starting out, let's talk about a couple of changes with uh, Farah. Yeah, Farah has gotten a little bit of a rework. Uh, their boost now gives them a temporary, a little bit of a boost when they're in the midair. They have a little bit of a blue bar. They also have a nice vertical or horizontal dash, so that gives them a lot more movement options in the air and a lot more speed and maneuverability. This didn't change all too much, but what did also change is Farah's health, but that was a lot of heroes got a big health upgrade. I believe Reaper has been buffed up to 300, Bastion around 350, 370, and a lot more champs are even higher so as we get further into these patch notes you'll see that there's been a myriad of changes yes here we are we have them to pull up right here there's been a ranked a lot of ranked changes but that's not going to affect the gameplay very much but it's much much needed as ranked was a little bit messy you could just kind of brute force it to climb up your rank didn't really have right. very good gauging of your real skill level Right, and as you see, the biggest change to rank as well that a lot of people, well, not necessarily the biggest, depending on what you think it is, but there is a new rank. It is champion, so it's been added above Grandmaster. Usually that was top 500, but it is going to be, uh, yeah, that most exclusive rank in Overwatch. So, you know, GM players or previous top 500 players, you get a new, uh, you get a new rank to try to hit. Wonder if a couple of the guys on our squad, we might see a couple of our guys on our squad hitting that rank soon. So, got to be excited for that. Exactly. A couple of, uh, you know, more changes going down as well. You know, as we just read through these patch notes, a couple of things on player progressions. A couple of things on friend endorsements. Just little sort of things here and there. New crosshairs. Yeah, yeah. Just, well, you know, just a couple of little uh, things, quality of life changes that, you know, just make the game a little bit more accessible for everyone. Exactly. But there, now as you can see, as we scroll further down, we're going to get down to the hero updates. And boy, there are a lot of them. All projectiles have gotten bigger as well. So yes. Mei and Kiriko are going to have much easier times hitting their sh skill shots. Same with Hanzo. And same with the hit scans. The hit scan has Those actually gotten a little bit larger. Be disgusting. Those headshots, I can just imagine <laughs> all like main Kiriko players just you don't even have to hit to hit anymore. You're just you're just if you, you miss sometimes, but what would have been a miss last season, you know, might end up as a headshot, could turn extreme, you know, it could be extremely pivotal and turn the game around. We see some changes to Diva, Doomfist, Junker Queen. So, you know, it is it is what it is. A lot yes. of characters just got, you know, a ton <laughs> a of changes. A lot of different changes. Pretty much yes. almost every character got at least one change. So, as we go through the patch notes, a couple of interesting changes from the health of tanks as well. They seem to have been buffed just a little bit, as so did pretty much. Yeah, all everyone got a health buff. Well. So if, if the tanks didn't get a health buff, then it wouldn't. Right. You wouldn't have that felt as tanky, right? That <laughs> when Bastion. The game. So 
I mean, yeah, I, this is just crazy. I really am excited to see, like, if because of these changes, do lineups sort of differ a little bit? Like, are we going to start to see kind of a new meta go through the pro scene or the collegiate pro scene? Or are things just going to kind of stay the same? I don't really know, but we're going to find out soon enough. I firmly believe that there is going to be a new meta. With every big patch, there's going to be a new meta. But the great thing about today is... We have no idea what these players are going to be cooking up. You know, before no. it was really Sigma, Genji, Sojourn, Baptiste, Bastion, kind of all the same little comps over and over and over. But now with this big, fresh patch, we have no idea what the team comps are going to be. We have rough ideas already of what's going to be strong. You know, higher health DPS characters are just going to be way stronger because their health skilled way higher. So you really feel that they're healthier meteor targets like yeah. may and bastion especially like especially with like one character i want to touch on as well is like reaper the fact that that oh, yeah. guy now has 300 health and it's it's like you can just on dive comps he just goes in so much damage has 300 health he can just wait to use his phase walk so just a little bit longer gets in there it could be the difference of one or two shots that change a pick and then he can just get out get to those health packs with that phase walk so it's just interesting right like i think as you see the update coming in here for reaper i think that he's going to be someone who's going to be used a lot on those dive comps i think we should be seeing him a little bit more but because it's only first day as well a couple of these teams might just want to stick to their recency biases and if they don't work out then that's going to be the interesting thing of okay if this doesn't work anymore in the middle of the series let's see what changes will and so i think that's going to be kind of the make or break situation for a bunch of these pro collegiate teams is just finding out what works or if their style of play has officially been ruined exactly you got to stick with the comfort picks at least at, right, to right. begin at least for first yeah. Round. yeah but you know it's already been out for uh five hours so maybe they've already had time to experiment in their practicing right before this match so maybe we'll see some different stuff come through but nonetheless the supports now are just you are going 250 health yeah a little bit wild. meteor yeah but uh so the team fight should last a little bit longer with the health buffs across the board we should be seeing a oh, lot oh wait i was wrong base projectile size reduced from 0 0.18 to oh, 0 0.15 right. so it's actually going to be harder never mind so you know what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i know the projectile sizes have increased for a bunch of dps players or yes. characters at least M mainly every single uh, so, maybe Ki so maybe kiriko has just been nerfed into the ground like i, I don't know i don't know kiriko's dude was just very strong only the only being the only character that can cleanse the debuffs so right i believe they want to keep that balance keep the projectiles right and a I little think, bit even smaller mainly. i think that is fair if you're putting her at 250 health because i'm just kind of <laughs> imagining a 250 health kiriko running around hitting headshot with those kunais obviously you know how much damage the that does right i mean most most characters are susceptible to just a simple two tap i mean so it's just absolutely insane the damage she puts out uh when you are looking for that headshot so it makes sense to actually reduce yeah. the projectile if they're going to buff her health uh, as for everyone else. I noticed that there were some changes coming to Junkertown. Uh, there were going to be map changes that they announced earlier, uh, especially because Junkertown was just kind of a map that I was hearing a lot of complaints were coming yes. from. So, you know, a couple of good quality of life changes. We'll see how they run. And uh, that's just going to kind of wrap it up for at least the map changes as we kind of go further and further down the list. And then we get some bug fixes, obviously. You know, those are just general. Those are just going to kind of come in anyway. So any bugs from last season that we kind of that they kind of noticed, I'm sure, just going to uh, fix some lighting as well in some of those areas of those maps. So yes. just kind of general. Nothing game breaking that had right. to be fixed. Right. Exa exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, we're in that final part of the patch. Yes. Well, we see some game breaking glitches as we get further down to the hero section, which is more just clipping into walls, not being able to do what you want to do. But uh, another thing that they're adding, which is just kind of a cosmetic buff, but it's to encourage people to play ranked. Instead of golden weapons, we're going to have jade, jade weapons, weapons, which is yes. just a green, shiny gold that you can put on your guns and weapons. But that's nice to see. It'll go a little bit better with some other skins. But overall, this is a major patch, and it's going to have major ramica ramifications going forward throughout Overwatch and especially today's match where there is no defined meta there's only guesses we're gonna see if our players have guessed right but that's not all we have for today is it 
Patrick. Right. No, we have some Call of Duty as well. You know, I love to cast Call of Duty. And there were some changes that also did come to COD recently. At least, you know, we would have, they would, players would have played it um, since, but we didn't get into it uh, at least the last time since I casted it. So a big change in COD as well before we get into our game right here as we see prepare to attack is a couple of nerfs to the MCW, which is kind of like the ARX. So those attachments will be kind of changing up a little bit. We'll see if the players make any of those adjustments. As we get in though, let's look into the lineups, Matthias. Yeah, here we are. It's looking pretty similar. We have G-Skills on Ramacho, the Holy Juan on May, Injustice on Lucio. Love Note on Baptiste and Grubby on the Bastion. And here we are on Lijong Tower on the first point here. It looks like G Skills is doing a good job at holding them off. Both teams opting for the Ramatra, which is an interesting pick. As you can see, Haruka get in there on the May, try and spray them all down. It's quite work though. As you can tell with the extra health changes, everybody's lasting just a bit longer. It's just I say that Injustice gets one pick and it looks like Sloth is also going to go down to Injustice as well. Right, I mean, the story of the game, to me, is going to be with both Maze out and the fact that Grubby's running a Bastion. If the Holy Juan on May can just use those May walls to isolate that tank in Ramatra and Sloth, it doesn't necessarily matter with the damage reduction. That Bastion is meteor. He can pop the <laughs> turret. If they can isolate this Ramatra from the team of St. John, this is going to be St. Clair's field day with that Bastion on lock as well. We see as the snare goes down, getting through the May walls, they're trying to have that 100 charge, and it's going to find Grubby on the side of Jake. G Skill's getting rid of that Bap Lamp. And right now, as things sort of progress, you see the Mays, both of them, going into their icicles, and they're going to get the pickup onto G Skills as well. So far, a pretty good job of this retake from St. John's, doing it early and not letting the Saints get too much percentage before they have to retake themselves. Yeah, they're doing a great job at holding them off. Getting the retake is going to be key here. As we see G Scales move up a little bit further, trying to lead the charge, just regroup with the team. Right now, we have a lot of alts on the side of St. John's, though, at the ready. It could be a nasty combo, but it looks like Grubby's going to use an alt of his own to try and open up the point. Sloth's going to get caught in it. Looks like Holy Juan going to hold that one down, get the freeze as well. He's going in, he's going to put the wall, isolate them all. And now Grubby going to get one, G Scales going to get another. Holy Juan going to get a double kill there. Ooh. <laughs> teaming up his, queuing up his team there, and G Stills finishing it off with a little bit of a punch. Right, I mean, that was such a picture-perfect retake. It was everything you really wanted. You only had to waste about the three alts as well. So you do have that beat to counteract the counter push that will come through. You also have the Ramatra's Annihilation as well. On the side of St. John's, though, the freeze is going to be everything, and I believe that Ramatra on the side of Sloth. Yep, there we go. He has his ult and the Annihilation as well. So first couple of picks is going to be really the deciding factor on what happens. If you are St. John's and you can find this first pick, I would imagine that they would just go ahead and pop the Annihilation to enter. There it is. And everything else is going to come in. There's the freeze. And as we see the beat go down to try to help some of these St. Clair players, it's just going to be a matter of time before some picks come in. And as the Annihilation comes in as well from GC, it's actually going to be death to him. Holy Juan almost has the freeze, but without that tank, it's going to be very hard to hold. And right now, St. John's look like they are going to pull away with this, and they might have a successful retake, barring an absolutely huge throw. Seems like they're just going to figure it out. They're going to fix up, and they are going to take the site back. An amazing retake there. While well, St. Clair College did get 89% on the board, they're not going to be too far behind as long as they stand stalwart in their defense. They might be able to take this one. But it's going to be tough as Holy Juan does have the Blizzard once again, and Love Note does have his ultimate as well, which is going to be a crazy window there. Going to go with the Ramacha and the Bastion. Jake going to find one in the Chaos. Freeze going down as well. There's a freeze. G Skills is going in with the punches. He's going to try and take one out. But it looks like he's not going to be able to. Jake going to pop the ult as well. Gets taken out by Grubby. Wow. What an amazing Bastion ult. And you know, the Bastion, not usually an ult that you really look for to find kills. It's just kind of something, you know, that you use to create space and move people to where you want them to get into your lines of sights on your teammates. But it was a beautiful play there by Grubby. Really opened up everything for St. Clair. And they're going to be able to take this first map. 
an amazing first map for the Saints, but St. John's did have some great team fights here. So going forward, I think the Saints are going to have to play a little bit more careful. And as I say that, they're going to switch into the Pharah, which is a much more careful pick. You know, you're up in the sky away from a lot of the gunfire. They're going to go with a, for a pharmacy comp there. And G Scales switching over to the Diva, make it a little bit more tanky, a little bit more quicker onto the site. But the thing about D.Va is her defense matrix doesn't counter for Matra's punches. It goes straight through. So I don't know if that's the exact best pick, but maybe they just want a little bit of extra speed on their team. For me personally, we see the pharmacy combo coming in from St. Clair. We were talking about those fire reworks. It's going to be interesting to see how those tailor to St. Clair. And I don't believe on St. John's, yep, they haven't brought out the fire either. So it's going to be a little weird with a May and a Sojourn who's recently had some nerfs to bullet spread or pellet spread. It just seems like, you know, with not a lot of hit scan options, it's going to be interesting to see how they counter out this Farah. And now as the Diva starts to get to work, Defense Matrix down, she's just going to look to get out of there, obviously. Doesn't want to get glued down by the Ramatra abilities and the shields. And now, this is exactly what I want to see. I want to see that pharmacy combo. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a little weird. Players are going to get ha used to the fact that, like, they can't regenerate yes. um, boost anymore on Farah unless they get down to the ground. So, yes, while well, you can overcharge, it's going to be a little weird. Oh, what an the ult. ult goes down by the Farah and Grubby, and it's going to find the Lucio and the Ramatra. And now the Diva is going to clean up the rest, and Mercy even and Mercy. going into battle Mercy <laughs> mode as well, getting the rest and getting a pick with the punch. Beautiful start from St. Clair. Mercy's in a very good spot right now and you can just see it right there. Just getting kills and keeping everybody up nice and healthy. Mercy's just a great pick for sport, especially when you're with the Farah. As you can tell, the Farah really opened up the sight there for the team. But it looks like St. John's is trying to go for a little bit of a run around on the side of the Saints, trying to go for their flank. But it looks like G-Skills is there to match them at every point. But Jake finds Grubby off guard in the sky and shoots him out of the sky. But Injustice is there with a res at the ready as they get ready to push on to the point. Yeah. Daftis keeps everybody nice and healthy. Orb Lava going down. There it is. G-Scales going to try and hold everybody off. They do have the self-destruct if they need it, but don't think they are going to use it just yet. The sound barrier, they're waiting for that to go down. Everybody's on the site. If you're going to use it, now's the time. Haruka going to get its pick on Love Note. G-Scales going to go in, trying his best to secure the site as his team falls down around him. It's all going down, and Justice loses the Farah. Jake going to use the over overclock there, and now it's just pure chaos on the board. The entire team of St. John's versus G-Scales and a Mercy. Who's going to win? And now the Mercy's down. No self-destruct used, and that is the tank down. And it was a good play by G Scales not to waste that alt. I do actually have questions on the side of Jake. Yes, I understand. He's been playing great so far. I'm not questioning, you know, anything that he's been doing, other than the fact that I really do think with a freeze and almost a damage screen and an annihilation in pocket soon to come for St. John's, I wonder why the overclock. It just seemed like it was kind of already done and dusted. They had G Scales a little bit low. The team wasn't really going to necessarily go in and just choose to die solo. So a little bit of a questionable uh, play on, you know, my thoughts, but you know, these guys are better than me anyway. So maybe they know something that I don't. Yeah, that was an interesting pick. I think you just use the overclock when you feel like you need to take a target down and G-Scales was that very tanky, messy target that they just couldn't quite pin down. So you want that little bit of extra boost there. But yeah, it's probably not great going further into their ult economy. So it's it's a little bit of a toss up there. To, to be fair, they did have they were gonna have alts to back up on. Yes. So maybe it was just kind of the thing where it's like, okay, guys, chill. We're gonna have the annihilation. We're gonna have the damage screen. And so it's just kind of like you can you can afford to you know if you want to use it right now, just so you can build up on it later. Then we can kind of get that rolling. So I'd assume that would be really the primary reason for why that had to happen. But. As we enter a quick pause here, I believe we have just a couple of technical difficulties. Yeah, that happens. You know, maybe someone was flicking a little bit too hard, spilled on a keyboard. You know, it happens. But we'll be right back there soon. But one thing I do want to discuss while we have the time to discuss it is the team. I, I like that they're changing from point to point. St. Clair is. Meanwhile, St. John's isn't really changing up their game plan. They're really sticking with that Ramantra kind of dive-ish comp with the Sojourn. And 
I think that might be working out better with them because the Diva switch, like I mentioned earlier, is just getting completely uh, p pulled apart by the Ramatra. It's just bursting through that defense matrix. It can't really guard against anything there. So it's, it's a really tough fight when it's tank v. tank. Right, and I do think that I like the decision to bring out the Torb, but I feel like St. Clair as well, you're switching up on damage a lot. It worked the first round. I get that, you know, it, different comps differ and play differently on different sites on a certain map, obviously. But, you know, whatever St. Clair's doing right now, St. John's is completely in control for this second point. And I do believe it's was you stated, right? The Ramatra is just allowed to have a little bit too much, especially in that tank comp, 1v1 versus each other. It's just that we're going to be coming out on the Ramatra side. And especially in a game where you no longer have any off tanks, that really can decide. I, you know, I know it's on a one-man game, but it really, that just a change like that really can decide the fate of a team. So it's going to be interesting to see how St. Clair counter this out. Maybe they go back to just taking their own Ramatra and seeing if they can diff. But oh, they the got the sleep, sleep going though. down. And, and wow, the, the grubby face off their sleeves. It's going to find three. And Cheese wow. is going to clean up as well. You know that what? might have been the map right there. Everything we just said flipped just on a dime. Absolutely went to nothing, and that's why me and you are pro <laughs> players. Well, but, I was I was gonna say I think the Pharaoh might be able to do something here, but and uh, I was didn't know it'd be that quick of a yeah, turnaround absolutely. there. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Beautiful retake from the Saints. Yeah, an amazing retake there, and now they just have to keep them off the point. 85% and climbing. You only have a few more moments left in the game, and you know, they have so many alts to their name. You know, G Scale's just waiting to use that diva bomb like the exactly. second they have to the touch. self destruct is ready to get the sleep on the ramatra it's not gonna be too much good though okay, we're gonna get a nice push off the map on the baptiste wow. there that will do anything but wow the, the oh, annihilation, the annihilation. takes out one this might be a retake here at 99 percent unless they can oh, do something wow out. absolute wow. team wipe from saint john's university i thought that saint Clair almost had that in the bag but the second that you, the second Grubby went down after hitting the concuss and the ledge off the map, it just absolutely fell right apart for the Saints. I mean, even G Scales using that Diva Bomb as well and then dying for it immediately when the Ramatra pops Annihilation. I'm going to say right now, this is going to come down to how good of a freeze the Holy Juan can put on. That's a good pick to start things out on the Soldier. No more heal can coming down from him as well. And as the freeze comes down, you really have to hope that they can either get people off the point or just trap. But the overclock coming in from Jake, that play from earlier when he used it, I said it was a bad call, but I'm going to eat my own words because now he's built the economy to build up another ult. But as I say that, Grubby is going to do yet another 3K on this rocket barrage, an absolutely insane Insane play by the Farah. St. Clair, wipe it up. They're emoting. It's <laughs> over. They're going to take that second point as well. And that is the map for them as well. The first point on the board in this best of five here. And this is looking to be a close one because that last yeah, point you already, was so you already close. Knew, you already had a feeling. 99 what this was going to be. It's actually going to be the one from earlier. You know, it could have been either the of the first two. one. That's what really kickstarted an everything absolute there. crazy barrage. And then he's going to get the fourth as well, helping out on the kill on the Lucio. I mean, that was just absolutely insane. I wanted to see the Farah get played here. I wanted to see the changes. Obviously, we know that she also has an increase in fire rate as well. So... I'm just blown away right now. Grubby played that so well. And shout out to the Mercy as well for exactly, assisting. Yeah. Usually I hate pharmacies. <laughs> I think it's totally cringe. But it worked out perfectly uh, to St. Clair. Yeah, with the movement changes, it makes Farrah a little bit more exciting to watch and play against as well when it's darting around left and right. And they're not just hanging out, camping in the air as much, especially with the boost changes now. You kind of have to be a little, more, a little bit more choosy with when you want to take to the air. And... When those choices, when you do make those choices, you have to make them correctly, much like this Farah did, getting two amazing alts back to back. Right, and I mean, you know, G Skills ended up sticking with the Diva through and through. Turned out to work out this time, so I mean, you know what? Maybe he just said, "Screw that." You know what? I know I'm just better than this guy. I'll just run the diva anyway. Who knows what was going through his head? But regardless, it worked. What I will say is the Ramatra on the side of St. John's did play a pretty good game, to my you know knowledge. Everything that I was looking for, he was kind of doing. Gave them that second chance as well with the annihilation to retake that point when it really mattered. 
But in the end, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Three words, grubby rocket barrage. That's it. Yeah, Grubby was a little bit of the star of the show there, especially on that second map there. But, hey, it got them the point. Pharmacy's back in action. It is now looking to be the meta if you're not going to, you know, play the snipers, the ones that can shoot them right out of the sky. So one thing I didn't see them do is use the maze projectiles to try and take out the fair because now maze projectiles are massive. I played a match right. earlier today. I was trying out the new Fera, and I was getting countered by May, which was not really a possibility before. It's not usually a hit scan, right? Yeah. Like it would be it was very way too even tough. when looking at the lineups and everything. I was kind of sitting there, and I'm like, you know, even with the Sojourn charge being at a default of 25, and even with the May like projectile increase, I hadn't played yet. So I still thought that with barely any hit scan and the pellet spread as well to Sojo and that nerf obviously that happened about a year ago. I was kind of looking at it and I was like, this should not be working out for them. You know, to be fair, it really didn't because yeah, Grubby just will. with the movement <laughs> upgrades as well was able to just kind of dip and dodge through those icicles that May was firing out. But, you know, if she just hits one or two of those shots with those upgraded it's projectiles, over. we could be having a very different conversation right now. Exactly, and what a great conversation we're having as we wait to get into the second game. I think that's gonna we're going to be getting into that one very, very soon. And here we are. Of course, we're seeing Grubby once again on the pharmacy comp, and it looks like they're running the exact same comp that they ran in the last map. Now, what I will say is, yes, as the Holy Juan is going to be on the Sojourn, St. John has a little bit of a switch up. They are electing to play the Zenyatta, uh, as well as I believe the Soldier came out for a bit, but the main change is going to be Sloth on that D.Va as well, abandoning the Ramatra. And I'm assuming the reason why they brought the Soldier in is because unlike the Mei, they may have a little bit of a bit better confidence about getting Grubby out of the air with that hit scan. So it's going to be interesting to see, but as we get into the game right now, it seems like with no fuel, Grubby's going to have to stay on the ground and he has to try to avoid those certain engagements when he is on the ground. Of course, any fair on the ground just becomes a massive target. And especially with a soldier with a helix rocket intact as well, it's not going to be a matchup that he wants to see very often. Definitely when you do have to touch down to roost, you want it to be on these terraces here. But nonetheless, it looks like St. John's is having a little bit of trouble pushing through onto this point and they're not getting picks they're not going down as you can see the health changes makes everyone so much more tankier the team fights are lasting longer just as i say that g skills and holy Juan get a two kills right next to each other here and the fair is now going to use that opportunity to dive in oh, holy Juan gets one good. it's all down to the tank everybody's down and the the diva is just going to get bursted down in the corner here out of demacked and de-lifed there as they try and keep them up as long as they can to try and stagger out that tank Right, and I mean, as we see, the Rocket Barrage is already ready to go. In fact, all of St. Clair's alts are ready to go. So, right now, when the push comes through from St. John's, if you're in this situation right now, Matthias, which ults are you using and picking to use to counter and why? Like, we don't, obviously don't want to see all five go. That'd be horrible for the economy. <laughs> but it seems like the anti's going to go, yeah. uh, or sorry, the nano is going to go out first. And now with the overclock and the mercy all going down as well, it seems that our answer has been shown. And it's going to be interesting to see how even on this nano, what does the enemy diva do? Bomb going down as well. Wow, yeah, they're and, just... I mean, this is just trade after trade. Grubby with the rocket barrage finding a pick onto the diva as well. I mean, this has been wild, but it seems so far that St. Clair's defense is holding up strong. Yeah, they are just putting up an amazing defense right now, not losing any ground, just to keep them at this initial first choke. Booker does have an alt, and Bapo gets the first pick on Love Note there. That's a support down, but the res comes out from Mercy. These reses are just coming out of nowhere over and over. As soon as they knock one down, it just rises right back up. But it looks like they finally took some ground, and they're about to cap this first initial point. I'm excited to see what the Saints' reaction is. They have no alts to speak of. Then you're going to get a pick. They're going to get the sleep on the D.Va. 
Burning it down, and they're gonna chase down the soldier, but it's not gonna quite work. G Skills is gonna go down, and that is the first point looking to turn over to St. John's University. Right, I mean, it's just so hard to hold, especially because you gotta remember on the defensive side, ladies and gentlemen, when you do lose a player, they have to come all the way out from the defender spawn and meet back. So a death on the defense means so much more than a death on the offense with close spawn as well. So it was only just a matter of time, obviously. No team is going to be able, realistically, to hold a point like that in a hybrid game mode if it was a competitive match. Exactly, I'd have to agree with you there. But the switch up on the Widow is an interesting pick from Grubby. We're going to Farah and now just going for a pure hit scan here. It's a big fight happening in this upper apartment. Sloth is going to jump over, not going to go through the apartment, but go over. And Yaya going to try and join him there, but that looks like the Winston is going to get bursted down by the Diva. I don't know if this switch up was the right pick, as Diva is a great pick against the Winston here. Gonna try and burst him down. Winston is going to demec the Diva. He's going to jump in, try and take out the supports. Well, he has the chance. Gets one DPS. Will he get the Mercy? The Mercy's going for the rest. Doesn't quite get it, though, as G-Skills does go down. Sloth is just on the prowl, trying to take out as many squishies as he can as the tank is gone. And right now, as I believe that was... Yes, okay. So, the Diva Bomb is ready to go. You have to assume on the side of St. John's. I want to see how they use this Zen's Trank as... You will see here shortly. Obviously, we know Tranquility literally means Ooh, what a equal amount of damage. What a snipe from Grubby and the headshot onto the Winston as well. Finding another one on the Soldier. It's going to be on 12 health though. Probably not going to live too much longer. And there we go. As the picks come in right now for St. John's, no reason to really utilize too many ults right now off the back of that Nano on the tank. And right now, they just have to try to play safe. The Diva Bomb not even going to have an effect whatsoever. The Winston ult and the Soldier are coming, ult coming through, sorry. And with all those picks going down, it's just free pressure, take a little bit of ground, gain those meters, and they have that second checkpoint. And it seems like after that first little checkpoint, oh, sorry, the first checkpoint Point. Yeah, the first, the first point, they are just cruising through, already getting the first checkpoint on the map in record time here. The Saints are just having a rough time finding an opening here. They're trying, but try as they might, it's not quite working. Jake can find a nice pick, though, with the railgun shot on Holy Juan. Get a little bit of charge there going in. They're just taking a lot of ground here. Right now, St. Clair doesn't really have any answers to that. No alts on the board. Nothing to really counter the push from St. John's right now. As you can see, g -Skill switched over to the Sigma. It's doing a little bit better on sustain, but it's not going to be enough to keep him alive. He's anti-healed. Sloth is going in to start burning him down. Now, he's just down to his last little bit of health. His supports are keeping him up. The DPSs are not able to take anybody down. Everybody's so tanky now after the changes. It's such a tough job to even get a single kill. Jake could find one. Now, St. John's going to press the advantage with the numbers. Now, St. Clair is not in a great spot as it gets closer to that final point. Right, and I mean, it's getting just right there. And I have to point out that Sen still has his tranquility. You have to assume when an anode tank comes in, that's going to be exactly what happens. I knew he was going to pop it right then and there because the Sigma's ult was not going to have to go. The overclock comes in. The Holy Juan going to find a couple. And as trades go back and forth, Grubby's going to find two of his own, including a headshot onto the tank. Such a massive pick there for St. Clair. And with Inspire and with Inspire, Inspiration and the Soldier Alt, you have to assume that they might be able to have a little bit of payback here. They might be able to hold for a little longer. It's worth noting, though, that the Nano is going to be on the table for St. John's, and you have to assume the Winston Alt is going to be there as well. Yeah, they might be able to hold the line, but it's just a question of how long will they be able to do it for this last 40 seconds. They might just be able. Sigma Alt is a righty to be online here. Just a few more percentages away. Holy Juan going to try and take down the Winston here, but the Winston just singled them, singling them out, and also a Nano to Winston is yeah, going to be a tough break. beast to put down. They also get slapped, putting the beast to sleep. He's <laughs> <laughs> stopping the raging gorilla. The They're getting anti healed. Well. They're so low. If they can take this tank down, they might have a chance of stopping this push here. G Skill's going to use the ult, bring him up in the air, and then slam him down. That's, and that's going a to kill. Be it. And now the floodgates have opened. The Saints are going to push in and try and take them all down. Get, get the grenade, but it's not going to be enough. But it might just be enough 
for them to contest. They're going to try and hold on to this shred of hope. They're going to try and keep the game going. Can the Winston dive in? I think he's a little too far back. It's going to be about how long this Sojourn can last, and it's not going to be for long at all. Winston, I believe, has to die to get the overtime, but as he has none of his teammates around him and the shield, it's going to be a little hard to heal him, taking so much damage right now. The support's doing a semi-okay job of keeping him alive, but you can't do very much when it's only a Zenyatta and an Ana in the mix. So as the Nano goes down onto the Sigma, you have to assume this is going to be all she wrote. That indeed is going to be what happens. But St. John's with a very valiant effort and definitely going to be what you would think is a hard one for the Saints to replicate. Yeah, very strong round one from them. They got it nearly all the way there, but they're out of time. And if the Saints can just beat them, I believe that is pr pretty much going over to them. But it's going to be a very, very, very close one. It's going to be very tough for the Saints to try and push through that first point. They really have to prove superiority on attack here. They have to just barrel on through, win with time, and just try to keep the ball rolling because momentum is the name of the game here. As you could see, St. John's, when they had the momentum on their side, it just barreled on through, brought it all the way, nearly to the end. But the Saints, if they don't get this ball rolling, it's going to be an uphill battle. And now looking at the lineups as well, we're going to see Grubby on the Torbjorn. Not something that we've seen. Obviously, we saw Theo, uh, I believe on the earlier map, dabbled a little bit into the Torb pick. But as for right now, not really any surprises in the lineup. I did really like what I saw out of both Anna's on the other side. It seems like she's going to be kind of the healer lock for both of these teams right now. And I would expect so, because when everyone has more health and the bullet projectile is just bigger now, Everyone's going to be taking slightly more damage. Of course, that's why that health buff was introduced, but it also means that the healers have to do more healing in order to just satisfy that output. I so don't, I don't mean to correct you there, but the passive takes a little bit of the weight off the healers because now you can that run away true. and try and regen. So it's that a less, is true. <laughs> but that's responsibility on the healer, well, okay. but a lot more job to I do. I would say that you could argue as well, though, that as that passive healing is a thing, by running away on the DPS, instead, you then create more pressure on your healers to actually do damage as well as heal their other teammates. So it's a little bit of just both. I don't think neither of us are wrong, and I don't think yes, neither of yes. us are right. I think that's going to we'll be the see. safe answer there. Our answers, <laughs> our, our questions will be answered in this game as we see we're already on the first battle here for the first point. Grubby on the Echo, just doing a lot of burst damage on the D.Va, almost d out of the gate. You're going to have to retreat away from the point. Looks like they're also going to opt for the Winston as that did so well against them. They might fight fire with fire here. Holy Wong going to get a pick as well. And this first point is looking to turn over in record time for them way faster than St. John's had. And wow, just look at Grubby peppering them keeping them at bay, you don't want to walk into those echo shots. Right, and I mean, the matchup to look up for here is going to be if Haruka on St. John's can get rid of that echo. Seems like he was having a tough time doing it against the Farah, uh, at least in map one. But, to be fair, it seems like the hitscan was a little much to deal with for Grubby on the Farah in map two, barring the switch that we saw to Widowmaker. So it's going to be interesting to see now if he's a little bit faster with that echo. We'll just see if that has any effect. But as the helix rocket comes out it's going to take out the holy juan and right now let's just check take a little bit of a look at alt economy right now saint Clair having the copy on the echo and also having the nano on the ana it's going to be interesting to see how they use these in coordination with the overclock and the winston's just going to have to wait a little longer to find his the nano is going to go up though on the side of saint Clair. you know just trying to get that Winston up into the back line. The copy coming down as well as D.Va is the chosen target. D.Va Bomb going down from the Echo. And right now, she just tries to wow, put more pressure DPS. onto the D.Va. It's going to be the Mech Breaker. And now, it's a perfect, perfect take for St. Clair. They do lose one to the Overclock, but it's pretty much going to be all she wrote on this take as the final kill coming out from the Holy Juan. That should book them that second checkpoint it has and right now St. Clair 
with five minutes to go for that last point. I'm, you know, it's worth <laughs> noting right now, they've done so good. I believe St. John's, when they got that second checkpoint, had about 245, maybe yes. a little bit of change in between to work with. St. Clair almost double. having double the time. So I said it was going to be a very hard take for St. Clair to replicate, but as the snare goes down and Ultra starting to come back up and build charge, you got to think that St. Clair have a pretty decent look into what should be a very competitive yet saint driven final checkpoint with injustice getting two kills it's i'd say more than decent chance that they're gonna win this all right here love note taking down the mech of sloth now without a tank they're gonna just waltz right in here as long as they can get a few picks and they have some ults to spare grubby with the pulse bomb g skills with the rage he can just move right in here he's gonna jump in will he use the rage here i think he's saving it for when he gets really really low sloth nearly down they're gonna see the soldier alt come out on the side of st john's he's moving in finds one will he find more than that is the question he goes down unable to find a second kill holy juan gonna get a nice railgun shot holy juan actually gonna pop the overclock get one kill gso is gonna get in there holy juan cleaning it up and that is going to be it st Clair college winning 2-0 so far in the series and the trends were all pointing to towards what was going to be a Saints victory, but you absolutely called it there, Matthias. You said that it was going to be such a quick one, and indeed, it ended up being exactly that. That's why you're a great Overwatch caster. Oh, thank you. And I love sharing the desk with you. You know, as we look at this overclock play of the game, it's going to be activated after the two-piece, and now Theo is going to go absolutely berserk <laughs> on the side of St. Clair for the Sojourn. And you didn't even need to see the end of it, because that was just the end of the game. That's all she rode they all fell down and theo was the one to start that process but that's not all we have we have another final point for overwatch it's not best of three i believe it's best of five for overwatch for all things all the different uh series is there but what a one it is saint Clair is doing an amazing job here at just figuring out what St. John's is doing and managing to just completely dismantle every single game plan they have. Right, I mean, so far, if we're talking about ones to watch, I mean, you gotta say, I, Theo, you know, the Holy Juan, you know, he's, he's one of my caster buddies. You yeah. know, we love him, he's great, but right now, it's the other DPS on the side of Grubby. Grubby putting in the work. He's been absolutely unstoppable for that first map, and second map, I would honestly say that he was just doing, you know, well, not in the form of flashy alts, he was doing just as much to gain ground and really just push that defense back, just creating space so that they could kind of take it in the side of St. Clair. So, Grubby putting on an absolute absolutely beautiful show sure the holy one's doing great too the whole team's doing great but grubby right now is definitely the star player that i think we have to keep an eye out for exactly he's really being stylish here in this new patch just getting kill after kill making these game winning plays not to count out theo you know he won the last game on a single alt but nonetheless Overall, both DPSs are doing great jobs. Same with the supports. But, you know, let's continue that conversation we were having earlier. We got interrupted by the game there. You said that supports now have a little bit of a bigger job with the health buffs. I Meanwhile, I said with the health <laughs> I'm not trying changes, to get into an argument with you. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a good discussion to have, right? Okay, as long as it's a discussion. It's a discussion. We're trying to find the truth here. Debate mm -hmm. is where all great truths arise from. So... I think you're right. Them running out of the fight is a really big debuff and hindrance. So it really incentivizes the supports to do their job, to really get in there, keep everybody healthy so they don't have to run away, take themselves out of the fight, and stand for like 10 seconds and heal. Right. So what I would say is like, I could see in certain situations where that is the play to make. But again, you're never really going to see a DPS leave the fight unless let's just say the tank goes and the domino effect just starts to trickle down. Maybe you lose like one support in that mix. That might be where you see some of these DPS sort of fall off and regain that health without just kind of giving pick after pick after pick away. Maybe farming a little bit of ult charge as they get out of there. But I would say that for sure, like no, no both sides are wrong here mm -hmm. for like, just want to clear that up. But uh, that would definitely be the situation where I could see your point coming in mm -hmm. a lot more. And the situation where I could see my point coming in a lot more is going to be in that early stage, that early team fight setting where yes, the most damage does go down, but it doesn't mean that you want to have your guys exit the battle if exactly. no one's been 
picked yet because it's just a game of first picks. <laughs> so it's going to be that sort of mental juggle that the players have to kind of think about their priorities and which ones they want to get straight. As we get into this next map, Matthias, let's go over some lineups. Yeah, here we are. We have G Scales and Holy Juan changing up Junker Queen and Reaper going to be the picks there. Also seeing a Junker Queen on the side of St. John's. And wow, Haruka getting a nice early pick there, opening it up for St. John's to take this first flashpoint. Jake going to get a pick with the Railgun. And now the Shotgun Comp unable to deal with Jake's range as he gets Woo! two clean Railgun shots off. And what I want to point out, ladies and gentlemen, is in Flashpoint, in a game mode where movement is key and fast-paced movement is dominant, I am not surprised at all that you see the Junker Queen and the Genji's being picked up. The Kiriko to just be able to teleport early and just getting that ground and getting to teammates as well. But the big key factor here and the big difference maker is going to be which pick is going to come out on top? Is it better to run the Genji right now or the Reaper? I was talking about that Reaper earlier with that 300 health as he goes down to just about a little bit, but he's going to have that rehealing coming in from his supports. Both the Lucio and the Reaper are such a good combo. You can really speed up that Reaper, get him in there in close range, and it just makes for an extremely deadly high DPS dealing combination. So you gotta think here with the Genji going down on side of St. John's that so far you would think that the Reaper might sort of come on top here. We do see though that St. John's is doing a really Ooh, good job wow, of Jake. holding. And I think this is just Jake's game in all honesty <laughs> for the first point. He's done Definitely. an absolutely brilliant job on the side of St. John's. All credit to him, hitting some amazing shots. And, and now they just got to hold St. John's with the first flashpoint. Yeah, the first flashpoint going over to St. John's nearly, well, just uncontested from the Saints. Like you said, the Reaper might be a good pick, but closing that gap is your win condition. If you can't close that gap against the Sojourn, you're gonna be dead before you even reach him, right? You're not gonna be able to just walk up and shotgun them if you're dead before five miles away here. But as we see, the speed boost with the Kiriko is gonna be massive for the Holy One. He's gonna burst them down. TP back to the healers, try and keep himself alive, and it works. Gisil's also going in, but he's gonna get shredded down to 60 HP. But the Kiriko is there to keep him up. Love Note getting a nice double kill as well. Flashpoint is unlocking in one second. And it looks like the initial fight gave it over to St. Clair. Right, I mean, so far, this is the start, but it isn't the finish just yet. Now, St. Clair having to hold. You gotta wonder, with that Genji Blade and that Lucio ult in pocket. Oh, what, the oh death wow. Blossom well, trade. you know what? The Death Blossom's just gonna say no to that Lucio ult. He'll have to wait before he wants to use that. And now, as the Dragon Blade comes out for Hakura, he's going to see how much he can get with it. Obviously, we know that that Genji Blade now, Genji being able to swing that Dragon Blade so much faster than he used to before. I believe 0.75 seconds on the swing cooldown now, instead of like what it was like 1.7. I mean, almost a full second off on that. So that is going to be a big impact play on the side of St. John's. And you know what? We are going to get our answer. I was definitely incorrect because it seems that the Holy Juan has had enough of this Reaper slander. He is <laughs> going to hop on the Genji himself and see if he can outduel Haruka. Yeah, I believe that uh, last second Death Blossom was just, I want to switch characters. I'm going to use yep, ult. Make, maybe do something here. But anyways, we're going into our first contestion here on the Flashpoint. GCL is going to get a nice knife. Haruka going to get a pick right back. Good That's a support ult. down. The overclock is coming out from I believe that's Jake there, uh, or it's just a fully charged railgun shot. Sorry, I was a little confused there. G Scale's getting pick after pick. The Holy One getting a pick right back. Jake gonna get one down. Love Note, it's just pure chaos here going back and forth. But G Scale's stands stalwart, taking them all down for a five player kill streak. Right, I mean, it was just the cleanup. We saw the Kiriko almost starting to run for her life, just hoping that there was a teammate to TP to, but not the case. And right now, as St. Clair holds. You have to think that they have this next flashpoint. You gotta think, can they just hold this? What I will say though, is they don't have very much. They will only have two alts to counter this overclock and the Junker Queen ult. Now I will say, Katsune Rush is very good for this. But St. John's is most likely going to build on their own as well and have it. The anti-heal going down and that's going to be a very, very decisive factor as all the kills come in. It's an absolute team wipe on the side of St. Clair and they are going to secure that first flash, flash point, putting it up 1-1 one, one apiece. Did use the Kiriko ult there to secure that point, so now it's 1-1. One, one. They're going to have to contest, contend with St. John's Kiriko ult, as that is just a few percentages away 
from being a very, very tough thing to deal with here. Sloth also has the Drunker Queen ult in their repertoire, so it's going to be a very tough fight for the Saints. They have a lot of ults to deal with if St. Chons chooses to invest them. Here we are, just going on to the point. Sloth trying to take out the supports first, and he does. He There's the ultimate there. He finds one. Lo Love Note getting one right back, but Holy Wad on the cleanup. No. Dragon Blade into death here by Bapo there. Grubby cleaning up, though, with G-Scales as they manage to turn the point over for the Saints. Right, and even though it looked bad on the Holy Juan there, using the Dragon Blade and dying almost immediately after, the defining part of that team fight was when Sloth used that ult and got Grubby on the anti-heal. He just could they couldn't finish the job so low, but it ran out, and Grubby was able to get healed back up and even was able to find a pick in that matter. So that was definitely the defining point of that team fight. That is why St. Clair have that first part and first taken the engagement and now with the Katsune rush going down from Bapo, he needs to try to see with the Dragon Blade as well how Luka. fast can they retake it's going to be the death though onto the Genji but I think the damage has been done as the support, the tank and the DPS on the side of Grubby have been taken out Jake just cleaning up one last one on the headshot from the railgun, flashy as always and now you have to think St. Clair what are you going to do to retake this point? Name of the game is going to be trying to take the point before Joey Baloney there pops his sound barrier. Because that is going to be the game defining ult right there with Jake taking a holy wand. It's going to be a big thorn in the side for the Saints. In this fight, they're down at DPS. They're not going to have enough damage to overcome the team that is St. John's. They are just way too healthy here with their entire team, all their supports online and now the sound barrier is there in case anybody gets low they're gonna pop the the, the alt there love note gonna go in the sound barrier is up everybody's nice and healthy but they're still falling down with grubby's overclock he finds one he's trying to turn the point over g skills looking use his ult as well and holy juan there back with vengeance taking two out with g skills i was gonna say one. g skills you know he didn't even need to use his ult there's no point right i mean the holy juan cleans up perfectly and by that time it's just one support left g scale is going to cut him down and now they have it with the kitsune rush they can allow to just kind of play alt economy try to just let the holy juan gain alt charge before this final attempt at a retake comes through it might not be able to do it in time as now the alts go down overclock on the table kitsune rush from the other side as well and it's going to be this team fight that means everything first two picks going down three picks this is an absolutely beautiful retake by saint john's the snare finishing off the last one and then sloth to finish it all off on what I believe was just bare. Was it a team? I don't think it was a team kill exactly. I think it the was Mercy just was barely to, not one. Just yeah. barely not one. Yeah, the Mercy just able to escape. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Point given up. And now St. John's are staring down the barrel of a near victory. If you're on the side of St. Clair, you have a huge mountain to climb. It's do or die for St. Clair right now as they need to cap this next point to stay in the game. And they might not be able to do it here as St. John's is looking very, very good. They do have two alts to combo with on the side of St. Clair, though. And there's the Dragon Blade. He's going in, but he's going to die instantly. Wow. The slot. That's going to be a major thorn in the side for the Saints. Once again, Injustice going to get the res, though. He's back in the saddle, but without an alt, it's going to be tough. Now there's the ultimate on the side of G Scales. That is a lot of anti heal, but he didn't get enough down. The Kiriko cleanses it. Now G Scales still trying to take ground for his team. He's in the thick of it, trying to stay alive, trying to take anybody down but there's just not enough dps on either side but haruka's there to clean up there getting the kill and jake is also there to take out the support and now all the saints are in complete disarray all falling down this is looking very very saint and i was just about to say you know the holy juan he's such a good dps player but right now we're seeing him have some inconsistencies and troubles on the genji we've seen him die twice now right after popping that alt and he's just gonna get cleaned up again so i really do like the change to the cassidy and I think that this will be something that they can look forward to, especially just provided a little more hit scan as well is nice to have. And with that 275 health as well, not as fragile as you would think. 
And now as the Wasteland goes down and Haruka pops the Genji Blade. Can he find the Cassidy? He will. That's again another cleanup on the tank. DPS and one of the healers for St. Clair. This is going to just kind of be a steady downfall. You have to think that this one is all wrapped up. Saints not having enough time to get back. I doubt they will be able to touch as the Kiriko just trying to build alt charge just in case that does happen and that is not going to be the case. No point in having it there. Really, really great play there from St. John. They take what was an emphatic and amazing flashpoint game. Yeah, it really showcased their strengths there. Strengths there and adaptability. They just had a game plan and they executed it perfectly every single time. When Saints did have a play though, like this one, that was a complete team wipe. You can tell when their coordination is on point, they are able to do amazing things. But hey, that's not the only game we have here today. Here we are with COD, St. Clair College, Varsity team versus Concordia St. Paul. Hardpoint, our first game. It's looking like St. Clair is a major lead right now. Only 83 points to Concordia's name. Right, I mean, right now, all eyes should probably be on KB. 17 and 7 right now. What I wanted to touch on, though, was there were some recent changes. The MCW getting a little bit of a nerf in terms of ADS speed and also just overall mobility. So a lot of people are kind of switching over from that MCW 16 long barrel. They're kind of using, I believe, it's the... Uh, Night Peril, but it's just, you know, it depends. Some players, you know, they, it doesn't really matter. The recoil doesn't matter to them, so they might take the mobility. Some other players might just like the overall feel of the weapon, so they might just kind of keep it as is. It's going to be interesting to see how these changes sort of impact everyone as the cruise missile comes down and takes out Aspect. And right now, if you are Concordia, you have to sort of have a couple of really good holds here because St. Clair is just out and forth. Oh, he saw so the foot much. from under the guard. He saw the foot from under the guard, as Matthias says. And a pretty good cleanup so far. The Saints looking pretty dominant. Yeah, really dominant start for the Saints. Concordia not impossibly far behind, but as this hard point flips over for the Saints, it's getting farther and farther for Concordia to catch up. Brandon and GMG gonna get a pick. Jake is gonna find one right back, and Vista gonna be the one to get the last kill there. Dang, Priestley getting a nice kill with GMG. They're in sync right now. The Saints are on a roll. Nearly double the points and more. The Saints, Concordia has the work cut out for them as the Saints just have complete control of the map. Look at KB getting a kill. Aspect getting kills right back, but it's not gonna matter too much as the point is just gonna flip over to Concordia. But it's only two seconds left. <laughs> right, I mean, you got a lot of work to do right now if you're Concordia. And KB with that rival nine is just absolutely tearing your team apart. Yeah, they are just on a roll right now. And wow, look at that flank from Priestley. He didn't even have a chance. And that's going to give the hard point up from, from Concordia to St. Clair right now. Going to try and contest it. But this one, if the Saints can hold it enough, will be game. And they are doing an amazing job at holding it down right now. Brandon getting a kill. Well, that nade was very close, too close for comfort there for KB, but he gets a kill out of it anyways. Brandon gonna get a kill. GMG getting another kill as well. They are just on a roll, just running around and running loops around Concordia right now. I was just gonna comment on the fact that KB on that escalator, he gets hit with the stun, and it's just, run, trophy system down, don't nade me, please, and I'm getting out of here. So, pretty sweet rotation oh, so far on the side heck. of St. Clair, and as Priestley gets on that multi-kill, that's going to be all she wrote for hard points so far. And uh, yeah, you know, really good start from the Saints. And just the last second there, if Concordia held the line a little bit more on that contestation there, that last little touch, they would have been able to get one more hard point out of it. Would have been a one in a million shot, but they still would have had a chance. It was crazy. <laughs> and right now, <laughs> really came down to the kill board. I mean, all the Saints getting above their 20s, and we just see the you know the highlight players right now that I want to point out. Definitely going to be KB on the side dropping 25. So a really good start uh, so far for St. Clair. And assuming SND is next, most likely on. Well, you know, I don't know. I, do I really have the hope it's here. Actually, invasion. we have Karachi as the next. Karachi, one. okay. Yes. SND on invasion is definitely my favorite, <laughs> but Karachi will have to suffice. And uh, with this SND as well, something I want to point out to look out for. Obviously, we usually see pressures coming in onto the right side of the map, usually focused around getting control of that tank, getting control of those rails, and then usually hiding out the one player behind the forklift or the. Excavator. But one thing that St. Clair does a 
lot, and you'll see it, I'm almost certain, uh, on Krejci, is that Brandon will most likely play sort of a little more of a farther back role. On Invasion, we usually see him kind of hiding on that right side of the map on defense. He's usually on that bridge. He has a couple of sweet nade lineups that he usually kind of watches over. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Saints play this one out. And since it's my first time ever casting the Saints COD team on Karachi on SND, it's going to be interesting to see what they bring out. Exactly. And would you like to know the other maps? I have all the maps lineups. Yeah, just hit me with them. All right. Right, so we already saw Rio uh, HP, and then we have Karachi Control, then Kar another Karachi Hardpoint. We have three Karachis in a row, potentially, if it goes that far. And oh, then, wow. So wait, sorry. So it's going to be Karachi hardpoint, Control, and then Hardpoint. No, it's going to be uh, Hardpoint, S&D, okay. Control, Hardpoint, hardpoint again, again. Right. and then it's going to be a Rio S&D to wrap things up, if it goes all the way. But with... What we just saw, it's looking to be a 2-3-0, to three -oh, or a 3-0, oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I was just kind of looking weird because I, I was like, usually it's hardpoint S&D control. So no, I, no. I heard, I heard hardpoint control hardpoint, and I was like, what's going on? But no, it is it is what it is. You know, this is going to be our lineup, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to cast it for sure. I think right now, uh, especially, you know, with those recent MCW nerfs coming in, I really would like to see, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see it with the naked eye, obviously, but I want to see if some of those attachments have changed recently. So that's going to be what I'm looking out for. But uh, so far on this COD broadcast, I mean, just reviewing that first hard point yeah. match, <laughs> KB with an absolute brilliant performance. I just want to applaud everybody there. They were just in right, total I mean, control. Had everybody had each other's backs, but they were like rotating around the map, just running circles around Concordia. They're just in complete and utter control of the hard point. But on the next map, on, on Search and Destroy, they won't really have that comfort to play so aggressively. So I'm excited to see how they adapt to that, you know? Maybe Concordia will be a little bit more comfortable with a little slower gameplay style, and they can really sit back, think about what they want to do. That might make the map go over in their favor. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of just it as we went to get into our next game. I believe that uh, I think our uh, another Overwatch game will happen sometime yes. later tonight. Yes, we have so many more games. We have games. so much to cover. So, <laughs> so I mean, guys, just, you know, it, it's going to be a long night. Might as well stick around, get yourself a couple drinks, some snacks as well, and... Uh, yeah, it's going to exactly. be going to be a long night in the office, but a fun one nevertheless. Yeah, and if you're Concordia, do you have any tips from, you know, just the little bit of gameplay that we did see? Do you think there's anything that they could have done better there? Yeah, they need help. Um, <laughs> no, uh, what, what I will, that's, that's, a, that's a little bit of a, this on my part. I wouldn't say it's just that simple. It's just difficult, right? I mean, it just depends. These teams, I don't know if they've scrimmed each other before. Maybe they have a little bit of film on the Saints, maybe the other way around as well. It's just going to be interesting. But anyway, that's enough of that. We got to get into these first picks here. And Brennan and KB are going to find the first two. KB with a second one as well. You would honestly think that this is a hard point game mode the Jeez. way these picks are coming in. And St. Clair <laughs> finishes the first round just as long as the honestly the gun pick phase was going in that was an absolutely <laughs> insane push i just want to say i stand completely corrected on saying well, you can't play uh, aggressive on search and destroy but <laughs> we just saw it work beautifully and we'll see if concord will be able to react to that because you don't want to let your opponents get away with being so aggressive every single time you want to try and trade a few of those picks out, but that's just a complete wipe from St. Clair. Yeah, I mean, the Saints on attack, they just absolutely blitzed that A side. So it's going to be interesting to see how they I play around. they're on around. defense. Uh, they're on attack now. No, they're on attack now. Sorry, so wait. I, <laughs> they were that aggressive on defense, so uh, I'm curious to see how no, this works out. I mean, I do oh, think it didn't work out great. they would have been on... Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to leave it at that. We're just going to go to the current <laughs> round. Regardless of what happened, the only reason why me and Matthias don't even know is because the round happened so quick. We didn't even have any time to really understand what was going on. GMG finding a oh, pick before he gets traded Sinclair, back. Though. And right now, Brandon finds himself in a 1v2. That's not bomb. Playing that long angle, and that's what I know that Brandon usually likes to hold. Obviously, you know, you do need to just... You wonder. He has the bomb. 
you do want to see if someone is over going to over peak. He's just kind of waiting for that to happen. His aspect shows the sight lines. It's just going to be a nade coming through to just clear out some space. Now that Brandon knows that that space is clear, he's just going to try to rotate right now, try to see if he can find that first pick. I believe Bombay is going to be his target, but it's not going to happen. The sprint with the weapon up, obviously, not yeah. being able to defend himself as he rotates through mid. And Concordia is going to take that round 1-1 one, one apiece now. <laughs> Strangely enough, the aggressive play on attack did not work out too great for the Saints. They all just got picked off as Concordia just held the right angles at the right time. And going forward, we'll see if the Saints opt for that aggressive play again now that it's burned them once. Will they forgo it or will they go for the <laughs> quick takedown once again? All our questions will be answered in this round here. I'm wondering what Concordia will do to answer the aggression as well. Well, it seems like right now we're going to see the same thing. KB is just going to absolutely run straight through the A side. And GMG is on the B side as well. The Saints kind of playing a split right now. And as KB gets into some... Wow, what a nade. It's a double nade. Or not the double nade, sorry. A nade and a kill coming out from Aspect. Jaker is going to take out KB as well. One kill coming down. But for the Saints right now, a split aggressive take. And it's not going to work either. These rounds are ending so quickly. I mean, this is just kind of feeling like the pace of a team deathmatch, honestly, with the way it's going. Yeah. It's just absolutely insane. It's pandemonium. And the rival nine being able to clean up on the side of Concordia. It, honestly, I... <laughs> It and we looked do, like so it was going in St. Clair's favor, but now it's quickly switched once again to just go over to Concordia, and it's happening so fast that it, it barely feels like it, it's real right now. It's so crazy. And by the way, Matthias, I was just waiting for the rotation to come in. Yeah, you were right. That really aggressive push towards uh, the first <laughs> round, yeah, that was them on defense. So that's absolutely ridiculous that that even worked out. They were just probably trying to run a fast one by him. But so far, Concordia seemed to have adapted pretty well as they pick up two rounds of their own. And now it's just kind of a waiting game. Immediately, I want to say that St. Clair looked like they're doing a little more of a passive that approach. But as I say that, they got to try to take the swing stun going out. And it will be the K, uh, KB to notice that as the Semtex goes down in the flash as well, or the stun as well. GMG on this top of this building. Priestley with the headshot onto Clanless. And now as the plant is down on B, it's going to be Concordia that has to try to race there. And now as Jaker's last alive, has to try to find a 1v4 post plant clutch. He might even get the first pick here, but the cross angles are being covered. And as the player slides through the door, it's most likely going to be all she wrote. There it is. St. Clair tying it up two rounds apiece. Now that St. Clair is playing a little bit slower, Things are looking a little bit more cleaner. You can clearly see they had a game plan in mind, not just to run it down. They got the bomb down, and they got all the picks they needed. But as you can tell, we also have Overwatch going as well. It's going to be a push map. This could be the final one for St. Clair College if they can manage to do it. Actually, no. That's uh, St. John's won the last one. <laughs> uh, St. Clair has one more to go. Right, I mean, right now, if we look at the lineups, if I can just see, we have D.Va on G-Skills, Holy Quan on the Sojourn, and as the supports come in on the Mercy and Ana, it's going to be Grubby back again on that Farah. Let's see if St. John's are trying to counter that out. There's the May with the increased Icicle, is what you said was giving you such a hard time when you were playing a little <laughs> bit earlier on the Farah. Let's see if Haruka can hit those shots and be the difference maker. Yeah, it's all up to confidence there. If you just have the right positioning, you can really hit those icicles now, but Grubby doing the exact opposite, doing what I should have done, taking out the May in record time. G-Skill's also going to get a pick, and now G-Skill's just routing the enemy here, finding the, the DPS and the tank in one fell swoop, and now the push will be going in their favor for probably quite a while. That's the tank and a lot of players down. And by the way, when we do go to this multi-screen, you will see some stream titles, but if you get tired of hearing me and Matthias talk, don't know, really know why you would, but if that is the case, you can just put exclamation point streams in the chat that should bring up all the streams that you can choose if you want to see the pure gameplay as we get back into this overwatch game yeah they're doing an amazing job here in this overwatch game sloth trying to hold them all down and haruka gets the first pick that's gonna push them far far back and justice getting a res though on love note it's back in the action that's the support you need to keep everybody nice and healthy and g skills on top of this tram gonna go down Try and find There's something. the nano rocket barrage. What's it gonna find? Oh it no, finds, the bap lamp! It, it doesn't find anything. That was there, a the beautiful lamp. Wow. bap lamp. 
And now we see the overclock from Holy One, but it's not enough. Only finds one pick and gets taken out. Justice doing his best job to keep the tank up alive and healthy. They just want to stall out this push. Going to commit the ult, but it's not going to find. Actually, it does find the Finds tank. The That's a huge like, pick what? there. Wow, that was frame perfect there. G-Skill is getting another pick as well. It just as it seemed like the Saints were going to lose that ult. Got a lucky kill. Maybe it was calculated. But for me, that would be pure <sighs> luck. But they're right again, taking the lead with the push once again. And I mean, it's always been a little bit of a weird pixel perfect lineup if you can get behind that push bot for the alt. It just doesn't work that time for Sloth on the Ramatra. And as the D.Va falls to sleep, you have to think that Ramatra is looking to use this Annihilation soon. They have the Lucio ult as well, and as the BAP damage screen does go down, it's going to be St. John's mounting the push. The pick onto the Mercy does go down, and that is the Pharmacy combo gone. We saw that Injustice was able to get a couple of those key reses up on Grubby, but not going to be able to get any that time. Yeah, it didn't quite work out for them that time, but hey, they have a lot more time to spare. They've almost gotten the first checkpoint, but now St. John's will finally have a chance to really get a good push in here. Like Baptiste just trying to scout it out. They're just doing a solid job. I think the Saints are waiting for them to go around the bend, get to the first choke here. Everybody's getting kept up alive. What a bat lamp saved that soldier's life at the last second. G Skills rallying behind his team, trying to keep everybody up and alive, trying to just push them back a little bit further. Finds one pick, looking to find another sloth. Is it one HP? The sound barrier comes out, but will it be enough? There's Ooh. the Ramatra ult finding no picks, but that does enough damage for Jake to find the pick. Right, I mean, that's a little bit of a risky annihilation. Don't really know if I'm a big fan of that one, as now St. Clair is even going to capitalize and find the pick onto the BAP. And as the res comes through with the Ana, yeah, I'm really going to be questioning that Ramatra ult there. It just didn't seem like the right play to make. Maybe sure for a little bit of time slot. I bet you they were kind of banking on finding that push and then getting to that checkpoint, but it's not going to work out. And that is a huge ult to miss on if you are St. John's. Going to be a tough one to recover from but we'll see if they can do it. Yeah, we shall see, and just taking a look at the COD, it looks like we're on match point right now. Who's gonna take it? And it's St. Clair, it looks like they've hit their slide. Wow. They're just doing an amazing job, and I'm excited to see how this one ends. <laughs> ends. If, if they'll be able to do it, or if Concordia will find something that works for them finally, and start well, the win streak. I hate to say it, but it seems like St. Clair really just kind of almost threw two rounds in a row in the beginning. It seems like they were just trying to pull a fast one on Concordia, got it the first time. But now that St. Clair has been playing uh, these last couple of rounds with, might I add, a brain in their head, it seems like they're playing proper S&D now, and they're kind of getting back on track. The cruise missile from GMG being able to take out one as well. And as the 2v4 post plant comes down, it seems pretty apparent just who the more dominant S&D team is. And as this last pick comes through, that's going to be all she wrote on the side of SND on Karachi as St. Clair are going to be able to wrap that one up. 62 is your final score as we jump back into the push map. Now they're up 2-0 in the series. One more to go for them. And they win all the marbles. And then after you're up for game two tonight at nine. But St. Clair College in the Overwatch game also going in here. They're doing an amazing job at stopping the point, but now they're just far behind. St. John's has managed to pull into the lead as we looked at COD. They got the first checkpoint as well, so it's going to be very very tough fight for the Saints here. Sloth getting one, Joy Balloon getting one as well. Grubby taking one down in the chaos, but it's not going to be enough as now they pull even further beyond the checkpoint. And right now, let's do a little bit of a deep dive as the place sort of falters here. As I say, that gunfight going down, of course. It's Overwatch. It's always happening. But right now, we have to look on the side of St. Clair. It seems that they're going to be without their tank alt for a long time as the overclock does come in and the nano happens as well. Just trying to counter out that Ramatra annihilation on the other side. And they're doing a pretty good job of holding still so far. However, wow, just an absolute melt on the side of the Ramatra, the Bap and the Lucio onto G scales. And that is not an easy pick to give up. Grubby going down as well. And you have to think right now with St. John's on a really good heater of a push, you have to think that this one is in their favor, in their momentum. 
the anti going down on the opposite Ramatra though, and this may be the thing they need to capitalize. However, with the brig going down, it's going to be a very hard time to clear space. The snare catching what I believe was the bap lamp, and right now the Sojourn needs to try to find a pick. It's going to be found onto Haruka on the, on the soldier, but as St. Clair falters on the ropes, they need to try to deal with this Ramatra. It's pushing into the back line, trying to deal some damage to the brig, and that's going to be exactly what happens. They can't counter. St. Clair can't find the pick onto the Lucio, and with the anti heal doing nothing, they need to try to battle through the shield. They're they are going it. to finally find the pick on what Ramatra with the snare. The overclock from, wow. from the Holy Horn, finding one, two, and three. Probably going four. Down. And it might have been a fourth as well. <laughs> I think Matthias pointing it out on the kill board is just absolutely on fire. It's all the Holy Juan. And if St. Clair can make this comeback, that is going to be the absolute this defining moment of this match. This is the drive of all drives. If they can bring it all the way to the end here, they'll win it all. They have the odds stacked against them. They just might be able to do it. This is the push to make. This is the push of all pushes. If they get stopped here, this is probably going to be up. There's the Nano. There's the Coalescence as well. And now they're just going in. He's taking the punches. It's a little bit of a boxing match here. Who's going to be the victor? Who's going to be the championship fighter here? Wow. And it's going to be G-Scales. He comes out on top. Actually not committing the... Or yes, he did commit the alt there. But he's just cruising on through still. Actually didn't commit the alt. I, yeah, no, he still has yeah, that, that annihilation. Nano, my bad. It. He still has it in his pocket. They still have the ace in the hole here if they need it. And hmm. now they're going to keep pushing forward. But now the robot's looking to flip. Another big team fight is on the horizon here. Paul and there it is. They popped their own annihilation here. And they're pushing on through. They're trying to make it work, but it's not going to quite happen. And there's the annihilation from G-Scales. That break's going to go down. And Sloth uses Sloth. his as well. It's another fight here between tanks. And now the robot's going to flip on the side of St. John's. They're pushing it further. This is not looking good for the Saints if they lose this team they fight. They don't have a lot of ground to give up here, Matthias. You said it best. Wow! Oh, just oh on my a dime. god! It's just on a dime is right. Absolutely. G-Scales pops the alternate form, finds three. And the Holy Juan's going to find the last two as well to pick him off. Team Kill coming out on the side of St. Clair. And the overclock is going to be available for him as well to boot. Yeah, they, all, they are just winning these one in a million fights at the last second. It all looks like doom and gloom, and then the ray of Shining Hope comes through, and that ray is looking to be a holy one as he get, finds a railgun shot. Another overclock is in his pocket, and there it is. It gets popped. This might be the final lance that pierces the dragon here. They're pushing through. They're making a name for themselves. Gets anti-healed. They're holding on for dear life. Sloth is going to go down to Injustice. Haruka going to find the pick on the tank with no Tank gone. on the line. St. Clair is going to have a one in a million chance to win it all here. They're pushing on through. He needs to take down the support. He's nano. He's down to one HP. He gets taken down. The Holy One is down. Haruka is down. It's overtime. The clock is running out. And that is going to be St. John's winning another game. And you know, I just had to hope with both tanks gone, like you said, one in a million chance, because the near spawn for St. John's on that tank is just so much easier to work with. <laughs> this is definitely playing. Yeah, you just gotta see it one more time. Just I, look at that. It's absolutely incredible. So we're gonna see, he's going to get the get first one. pick with the railgun and the snare, finds the overclock, and now he's just going to find three and go absolutely massive. It was, yeah, it was four three, kills yeah. on the side from you, one from the snare, three from yep. the overclock. An absolutely beautiful play by the Holy Juan, keeping our Saints in it. And as we go back to Call of Duty, we see on control, St. Clair right now does have control over A, and as the lives kind of tick down, it's looking like a pretty close life counter so far. It's pretty close here. St. Clair did cap the first point, but they're having some trouble getting onto the second. Managed to take out a lot of them here. That might be their chance to take it here. Starting to get some points here, but Vistra getting one. That's going to be a tough pick for the Saints. They get one right back, trying to take one out in the high ground. Wow, look at GMG. That's some quick reaction time. Vistra finds one right back, though. Now, they're getting the point, but they're starting to lose it here. Recently going to find one, find two, and finds three. Wow. And that is probably going to be the point going over the Saints, but it's not going to be enough time as Jakers gets in there. H J KB going to get on and get on the point. They got one tick, only two more to go. And I was going to say that right now, it seems like St. Clair can just try to play for the second point on B, but 
it seemed like the lives were just so, so close together. St. Clair, you might as well just try to play for the lives remaining now, but it doesn't even need to happen because now they reestablish B control. It looked like it was going to be St. Clair focusing on the B point, then it switches, the lives go down. You're thinking maybe St. Clair can just kind of play life for trade here, but then they just hop back on that B point. They get the final secure. It's going to be Brandon on the side of that rival nine to find the last pick, and that is going to be match point. Yeah, we're already on match point here. It looks like St. Clair has just been totally dominant, even just looking at the kills. KB, 19 and 7. 7 seems to be the amount of deaths that he usually gets. That's his average death ratio, but his average kill ratio is through the roof right now. As Concordia is just struggling to get some footing against St. Clair, they really need to make this attack worthwhile here. Right now, as Concordia starts to capture the first zone and they get the first progress on A, Semtex, Priest is going to have to dodge it. Can he find anyone on the ground proning? Yes, he can find one. Slide canceling, trying to jump off the roof, but he's going to get shot down. It's just like skeet shooting, pull, and that's going to be all she wrote. KB trying to mount some pressure, but not going to find anything. The double wow. kill, though, from GMG. Can he prone? Just get that health back. It's going to be Priestly to help him in support. And right now, as the scenes kind of round this building, it's going to have to be Clanless to try to clear point. But it seems like Concordia has done enough. They have that A point captured, and now they can just try to play for B point. You don't really know, of course, St. Clair is a really good t uh, team when it comes to the respawn modes. You don't necessarily know if it's smart to play trade for trade, life for life on them. So it is smart for right now for Concordia, I would say, to try to mount that B push. But as I say that, they do have the two picks from Vistra and Jakes. And now, technically, if they really want to, they can just try to play trades and win it out. But they're going to try to look for that capture. We'll see how it goes down. I'll see soon enough. They're all, wow, and just as I say that, St. Clair getting so many kills off the board there. Double kill is going to be massive, up. and that removed any sense of control that Concordia had. They're all coalescing around B right now. Concordia chasing him down with the pistol, finds the kill as Aspect finds the kill as well. Their lives, their series lives are on the line right now as Concordia is down two in the series and down two in the match. They need to win this one, try and get the ball rolling for them as Priest and Gaby get Woo! the kill. KB get three kills on the board, make that four, as they are just team wiping them over and over, unable to get any progress over on the B side. KB, I just want to point it out right now. This man is 23 and 9 so far on this control, and it's just absolutely incredible to watch this guy play. He's so talented. I have the true privilege of casting over him, and as he picks up his 24th, you have to assume that he's not looking to quiet down anytime soon. Wrapping the building, I believe he has a rotation on this next Concordia player, but he's not going to opt to play it out. Right now, St. Clair just trying to play slow. They do slightly lead on the life counter. That's going to drop down. Trade's coming through. No, it's not. They have that too, and with 27 seconds remaining, St. Clair, you kind of have to just play lives here. You can just elect to sit, and as Concordia needs to try to find a couple more kills, it's just going to be a slaughter. Wow. St. Clair looked to kind of have it, and as the cruise missile comes through, it's over. can we see if we can <laughs> even find a BM? <laughs> it's going to find one on the Jakers. Let's go down. Final three seconds left, and right now, St. Clair doing a decent job picking up that third round. I would say it's more than decent More there. than decent. Decent was kind of <laughs> underselling it. They did a fantastic job finding the 3-0 on the control as well. Like I said, St. Clair, really dominant when it comes to these respawn modes. Who else to get the final kill cam other than KB? Finding the first and popping the second as well. That MCW, I mean, once you hit one headshot with it, the multiplier is just insane. It is an absolute damage machine going 27 and 10 for the side of St. Clair. When you have a play, when going up a Claire like that, you'd hope his teammates are far behind, but with 19 kills and 18 kills respectively for his teammates there, it wasn't even close at that point. They were just utterly dominant. Concordia did have their great moments in S and D. You can tell that they had some some potential there, but it was just outclassed by a KB there in gunplay when it came to the to the respawn game modes. 
Absolutely. And, you know, that's a really big tell uh, for me, at least, when we do see St. Clair compete, is how does SND go? Because if SND goes good on the side of St. Clair, usually the respawn modes tend to follow over as well. So it seems like that was kind of the trend. As soon as St. Clair kind of, you know, got it together on SND after throwing what I would say is just two <laughs> clown rounds away, it seems like this is a pretty dominant performance and a good job from our Saints. Yeah, an amazing job, but it's not over. They have another game at nine against Eastern Michigan University. So stay tuned for that. But we're also not done with our first Overwatch game, I don't believe. We still have to get through that Academy game. <laughs> Just It's been amazing so far. It's 2-2 two to two right now, I believe, as they won the last game. Yes, in game it five would now. Be, yeah, they would be in game five. So an absolute driller of a series. Yeah. It's you know, it's just been crazy. <laughs> it's uh, been so, so back far. and forth. It's on been, both it has sides. been so back and forth so far. It's been very interesting to see how these newest patch notes kind of bring that sort of energy towards the gameplay that we see. Obviously, you know, the big picture, it looks like so far right now, until some counters get found out, Farah just absolutely smokes everybody that seems to kind of be the direction that this is going regardless of if you bring like a hit scan or not right now the way st Clair has been able to utilize the farah has been pretty good however concordia or sorry not concordia sorry um st john's yes my apologies has been able to <laughs> sort of tame down that play a little bit, even trying to get them to switch off. So in the start, maybe they didn't have it figured out, but it seems like St. John's sort of have that little Farah uh, in the uh, counterplay in the back of their minds. Yes. So far, though, for the most part on tanks, it's just been a lot of D.Va and Ramatra, and then you just got to have Junker Queen on the flashpoint. Yeah, Junker Queen and the flashpoint just provides so much mobility for the team. Just able to rally everybody in those short, small points is such a boon. But uh, I think our next map is going to be another payload uh, payload map. So that's going to be very interesting to see because the payload maps were very one-sided for St. Clair. So we might see them have an amazing push once again. But depending on the map, it might go over to St. John's, I believe. Or St. Paul. No, St. John's. You yeah, St. Right. John's. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah, St. Saint Paul was Concordia. Concordia. Too yeah. so many Saints. Me, it's me, a yeah, very holy game. Me and you mixed up on the Concordia, <laughs> you know, St. John's lineup. But it is what it is. It's all good in the end. And uh, I think that, you know, let's get into some predictions. It's the midterms. Yeah, exactly. It's a, we're all frazzled here. We're all, we're, all, we're all very tired. But it's okay. But the show goes on. This gives me energy. The These games give yes. me so much energy. They make me so excited. I'm so excited to get right back into our Overwatch game very soon. About some score predictions right now. Just let's be honest. Who do you think takes this series so far out of what we've seen? We saw a little it's bit of an early tough. Saints domination, but a St. John's bounce back. So right now you got to think mental-wise, you got to have St. John's on a little bit of the uh, the higher end. However, exactly. you never know in a game like Overwatch where literally one pick or one alt can change the entirety of a single game. Yeah, the fact that it is a payload map, I'm going to have to give it to St. Clair once again because... They you did could so just well on see the, the momentum one. on the last one. They had double the amount of time that, that St. John's had. It was not even a question of which team did better on the Baylor map. It was St. Clair all the way. But, you know, you never quite know, especially with the, these different changes. Maybe it was just a map diff. Maybe it was just, you know, a mental diff at the time. So going forward, we're going to have to see. But as if my ears aren't lying to me, I think we are in yeah, we our game. In. Here we are. Let's see. Looks like St. John's is starting on attack. St. Clair on defense. Opting for the Sigma as the tank to rally behind on the side of St. Clair. Lee Juan sticking with the soldier. And I mean, how could you not after how last game went? The Absolutely. 4K, you want to just get that again. You're living for that. Sloth sticking with the Ramatra. He's moving in. He's taking a lot of ground here. Taking the high ground as well. Justice keeping everybody up. And the matchup, I was going to say, sorry to cut you off. No, okay. I just <laughs> I just wanted to point out the Grubby on the Widowmaker right now. It's going to be the matchup onto the Sojourn and the Ash. And to me, that is going to be the battle of the backlines, right? Who comes out on top? Is that Ash able to get rid of that Widowmaker? Or is the Widowmaker able to find a pick on the supports? It's going to be the telltale series of this game if those DPSs do stay locked. But so far, you know... St. John's doing an okay job. They have 241. They're sort of getting it to go right now. Let's assume it's a pretty decent start. 
Yeah, it's a pretty good start for them. They managed to make it past the first choke, but just as I say that, Holy Wan getting a nice pick on the support, but Haruka getting one right back, punishing Holy Wan for overextending there. And now G-Scale is going to get a kill on the tank as well. And Wall now the ult, they could all fall down, but he's a little too low, and he burns down to the Ash Dynamite with Jake getting two kills. But Grubby still there on the support Woo! fire, getting a nice two-piece there. And that's going to open it up for Holy Wan to dive and take out the last support. And that's right before the first checkpoints yep. the spawn they hold is it. still far back now they just don't want to give up any ground they want to hold, hold this off for as long as they can because sigma on it you gotta run get to your team before the push happens but you know what grubby such a good hold when he does have those wall hacks from the alt down yes. <laughs> and uh you know it's just an insanely good hold out of the two dps from saint Clair. Oh, burning him down as the tranquility does have he misses to happen. it. He does. Oh, the Sigma ult misses. Completely. I was going to comment. I wonder how oh. St. Clair is going to use the Tranquility and the Nano. They also used the Overclock there on Holy Juan. They used a lot did, of ults without they did any. They using a lot of alt economy and found nothing for it. And now they have to battle what is going to be a four ultimate swing as Jake is going to get his as well. You know, the damage screen. The, the beat the sound drop going down, and now the bob as well. It's just throw everything at St. Clair and see what happens. Tranquility going down to try to keep G-Scales and Grubby alive, but as that Trank goes down bob. now, you have to assume the melt from the bob is going Three. to happen. It's just an absolute no-show for the Saints. They are getting absolutely gunned down by this bob. They had no choice there. Is either push the payload for, or ignore the payload, turn around, kill the bob, and you lose the checkpoint, or you try and hold them off the checkpoint for as long as possible, and then die to the bob. But they had a real bad choice there. No decisions to be made. G Scales is going to now push forward, try and get some alt charge. Now, Sloth has his ult once again. Same with Jake. The overclock is ready. Now, there it is. He's going to go into fist mode. He's going to try and take some ground here, but he's going to get burned Rock. down to nothing here. Doesn't have much life left, but he's being kept up by the supports. G Skills, nice and healthy still. And there it is. There's the ult. Going he's going in. Sleep. Oh, sleep. Wow, but Jake gets pops the overclock, finds one. That's going to be a big opportunity for him. It's going to be Holy Juan down once again. And there it is. G Skills is going to pop the ult. He finds two. Will he doesn't find line, any kills. He finds three killed. actually on the back line, but that opens up the team. Wow, huge pick from Zen. Yeah, Zen gonna find the kill. Jake gonna find one right back. And now Jake gonna find another kill as well. And that's gonna be looking to be the second checkpoint here. Right, I mean, off the back of the damage screen, Jake's going to go absolutely feral on St. Clair. He's going to find a third and now a fourth as well in that team fight extended by that damage screen. Beautiful play by Jake Simbafo. <laughs> And as we sort of get into the late stage that is going to confirm that second checkpoint, St. John's, they might have a sound barrier soon, but it's going to be all about how that Bob and the Nano can play into things. On the side of St. Clair, I will say they did lose that point. And the problem is they also used three of their alts there in order to try to contest. But that's a beautiful shot there by the Holy Juan, finding the Bap Lamp and the Ash to boot. Now they just have to try to hold this payload. And as he gets to 39 health, really has to hop into that ice block to heal up the Fist form coming out for the Ramatra as well. Just trying to have a little bit of damage resistance, trying to pin that Ramatra back a little more, delaying time. It's just the name of the game. With 250 left as well, St. John's has to do a lot to try to get this point to the final destination. There it is. They're throwing on the E, trying to slow down their push, but it's just looking so good for St. John's. They're cruising right on through. It's going to be a while. The Saints yep. are going to have a hard time to pull this play here. And that's a big freeze. The tank is going to go down in record time. GCL is getting the final kill there. Now, going to push on through. There's the shield, and that's a push averted here. St. John's now has to reconvene with their tank and try and get past the choke once again. That's an amazing alt from Holy Juan there. That bought them a lot of ground. Right, and I mean, so far, the Holy Juan was the big reason that push went wow. down. Finding two crits in a row onto the Ash as well. Going to shut down that potential push from the Bob, too. They're going to have to wait before they want to use it. And as the Fist Form comes out, close to the Annihilation is the Ramatra. The Ice Wall soloing off the other Ramatra from the team. The Sleep comes through. G-Skills 
have some patience, have some discipline here. You don't have to pop this Annihilation just yet, and he's going to opt not to do so, saving it for a better life. And right now, as the BAP screen goes down, you just have to play patient. They are playing for this final little hold as four St. Clair alts are on the table. And with all of St. John's burning through theirs, it's going to be a nano is. into the Annihilation. There it they is. They retreat. And they retreat time. instantly. Smart play on the side of St. John's, and they can get this from Otter, just waste the Annihilation as... To, oh wait, the Annihilation didn't did it. come out. I thought the Annihilation came out, but I didn't hear the voice line, so I was wondering if it didn't happen. It was just the Nano. It was the there Nano, and now the Annihilation on the other side. Sloth is going to burn it, and he's going to die from the Bob as well. Bob down, no more damage coming in from that. The Kitsune rush on the side of St. Clair was all they needed to hold off that push. And now with 57 seconds left, St. John's are staring down the barrel of an Annihilation and a Freeze that they will have to deal with. It, what an amazing play. They nanoed the Ramatra to try and fake out St. John's and it worked perfectly. They didn't really have much choice. They had to move. There it is. And there's the Blizzard and there's the Annihilation. The final push from the Saints to try and stop. Wow, how did that Sojourn stay alive there? Wow. I thought she was Maywalled off from her support, but it was the Kiriko who I believe, or sorry, the Lucio I believe was just able to get there in time. Overclock coming in from Jake. And now St. John's have to kind of throw all their eggs into one basket. St. Clair doesn't have very much alt economy though. And with a damage screen and a sound barrier almost on the side of St. John's, it might be the, the alts from the supports that put them over the line here with 10 seconds left they have to throw all eggs in one basket great snare there from the sojourn and as the pull down does come through the shield up it's going to be the holy juan waiting trying to see if he can find that first pick g skills and the ramatra being able to find the may that's a very good may wall to try to isolate the tank but the ramatra just slips by damage screen going down but the ramatra on our side on g scales pushing through the damage screen he doesn't care snare to help him out 81 health he's going to find another pick though and it's not over just yet the holy juan Finding another one, isolating the tank. No more supports. No one can help you. The nano going down. Kiriko on the final pick. It should be all she wrote. And that's going to be exactly just that. St. Clair with a beautiful hold. I am now getting a little bit of deja vu from the last payload map. St. John's got it that far last time. So will the Saints be able to move with such momentum? on this attack. If they can manage to do that, they win the entire series here. It's two to two. Can't get any closer than this. It's gonna be a very, very close match. I'm excited to see who wins it all here. And I'm huh. seeing a lot of Ramatra plays as well, which was not something we really saw in the last meta, which is interesting to see. I love seeing he's such an entertaining hero to watch. Just the, the, the fists, the annihilation, it's so fun. <laughs> I was going to say, sorry to take a loud silence oh, from good. everybody. <sighs> but I was, that was a really, really, really exciting finish. I put everything into it. That was an amazing hold by St. Clair. Deserved all the energy. Me and, I mean, Matthias, you and I have been gifted a little bit, uh, quite the treat of this first Overwatch series. It's just been back and forth. It's been amazing. Two juggernauts just going at it. And so far, St. Clair find themselves with a hold to try to replicate and overtake what St. John's was able to do on their attack. Exactly. They have their work cut out for them, though, as St. John's did get it very, very far, just a hair's length away from the final goal. So now St. Clair needs to do that and more if they want to win this all here. It looks like St. John's is running with the same comp and same with St. Clair. They're going to switch to the Widow there on attack, which is an interesting pick, but when the sight lines are this long in the first point, you might as well. G-Skill's getting a lot of ground here with the Lucio. The speed boost coming in clutch. There's the shield up. He's going to take some ground with this team. Looks like St. John's is picking this bridge to make their stand on. It's like Jake here peppering them down from the stairs, getting a weird off angle on them, and they're unable to shoot back. And overall, Saints taking the initial push very, very well, but looks like St. John's not really overly committing to pushing up far. Holy Juan getting the first pick, and that's going to be a cue for G-Skills to go in. He has the tankiness to sustain the current damage. He's going to go in, takes out a support, Huge. almost takes out a tank, and like we saw before, the momentum on the side of the Saints is just cruising through. And as we get into our St. Clair varsity match as well, as you can see on our bottom left again, exclamation point streams if you want to go to the gameplay purely only if you are tired of me and Matthias' commentary. Oh, However, we're going to keep it on the academy side. And why would you when we're casting <laughs> quite the game like this as a Ramatra on the other side, popping the fist form, able to just try to find the bat plant, but he has to pull back and try to play for damage reduction.
production right now, helping his supports can try to get there. The Holy Juan has done so much there, isolating the tank with a May wall, finding that big health pack as well is going to be a nice little boost. The oh, the Ana oh, going no. down though. However, huge picks on the BAP and the Ramatra, but they answer back again. St. John's taking down our tank and then the May. An absolutely beautiful sight to see if you're on St. John's. <laughs> Kiriko finding a pick, but the refrag comes back yet again. It's been back and forth between St. John's and St. Clair College, and it's been a beautiful match so far to watch. Beautiful is an understanding. This is as close as it can get. It's just so far from, so close to the second checkpoint. We're seeing a repeat happen of what happened to St. John's. They just need to push it that far further, and then things will probably start to get moving in here. Scales leading the charge, peppering them down with the staff, waiting for the opening to use the fists here. And there's He's going the down. freeze. He's going to move in, try and take out the back line, try and take out the front line. Look at all here. the heels they're trying to pop into the Ramatra, but it, damage it, it doesn't matter. It's going to be able to be the anti that ends up doing it and sealing his fate. And now as these picks come through on the side of St. Clair, the overclock was a good attempt by Jakes, but as it keeps on going down and down and down, he's losing teammates left, right, and center. It's going to be St. Clair to claim that first objective. Yeah, Holy Juan, that was a clutch blizzard there. Locking down the tank was what they needed to do, and they brought it down in record time. They did so much damage to overcome that, but they passed the damage checking. Look at Grubby, just flexing at this point, just getting a nice early snipe. Barely coming out alive, though. He got bursted down. Right, and I mean, you gotta think though, who do they pick off? They picked off the Ash, who was at 93% to Bob. That is a really good pick if you're on the side of the Saints. And right now, you have to think, St. John's, you need something to get yourself back into it. And it's going to be the Fist Form to try to come out. But the Annihilation being used as well from Sloth, that's going to be their entry in the Anti-Heal. And now it's going to be the Beat to try to keep Sloth alive, but it's not going to happen. The Beat done for nothing. And you have to wonder, this Bob coming out, is it necessarily a good play? Because you did have that pick coming in earlier. They're acting as that Bob as their tank so far as St. John's, using his big health to get into battle. And now it's going to be the hold. And the Annihilation is coming out as well on the side of the Ramatra St. Clair being held back just a little bit and I will say while they did give up meters it was a decent hold and a decent effort by St. John now forcing the Saints to retreat as well really beautiful play there using the bob from Haruka to kind of act as their tank when their tank was no longer there another blizzard comes up for Holy Juan takes out one gonna take out another but the battle lamp keeps him up uh, what a support there Holy Juan getting another kill with the blizzard love note getting one but Sloth taking them all down with Haruka and now the push by St. Clair has been squashed here. They're going to have to reconvene and try and get up this hill, but it's going to be tough when there's so much <laughs> damage from the A high ground peppering them. as well that they have to deal with from the low ground going up is just never easy as well, Matthias. It's a Sisyphusian, a Sisyphusian task here. They're going to have to push this boulder up the hill and push the payload even further to the next checkpoint here. But try, try again is the name of the game. They're just going to have to keep on trying here. You don't want to give up when you're so close to the next checkpoint. You need to try and equalize it with St. John's or do a little bit better. But Sloth is just doing too well here with the Ramacho getting a double Woo! kill out of the gates. And now the Saints just have to back off once again and try and regroup. And right now, you know, Sloth using the damage screen to his advantage. Jake finding a pick onto Grubby as well, just avoiding the damage from the snare. It's just been back and forth. Trades coming in one after another. I feel like whenever a player dies on either side, it's almost refragged instantly, at least within the next three seconds. It's absolutely unbelievable play coming out here from both teams. They're just putting on such a show. And with a minute coming down to win it, you have to think with Sloth on the Annihilation and the Bob almost going through as well, it's going to be almost everything needed here from St. Clair to try to mount a push. The Nano is available. However, with Slothy now, I believe, does still have the Annihilation in pocket. It's just going to be so hard to retake. The freeze going down, and this is the play that St. Clair need. The sound barrier going down just because Sloth was found on the pick from Grubby as well. That is such a massive pick. And now with the Nano coming down, you have to think that St. Clair might be able to pull something out of the grave here. It's going to be the wow. 4K coming through. G Scales and company moving through. It should be the point. They should have the checkpoint, and they will have two more minutes to fight to try to bring this to a close. What an amazing play there. Now, when the light seemed to dimmest, it seemed like St. Clair was about to lose. They managed to find an amazing play there to break the stalemate. 
Now they just have one final stretch. All they have to do is get it a little bit further than St. John's, and then they have won the series. They have two minutes to do it. Time is running out. They need to move quickly here. Mayhick going in there, brawling with the tank. That health buff is coming in clutch here. Manages to regen all the way back the full. There they are, they're pushing in. They have the Annihilation prep. They want to use it when they most direly need it. What a sleep! What a sleep indeed. It's going to be massive for the Annihilation. No more time here. They pop an Annihilation. No, that's just the fists there. And now they're going to keep on moving on as they are getting to this corner. This is the final choke. They have to push it through. They just need one more <laughs> team wipe. They have to get it done here. And they have the window at the prep. They're popping Damn, it. But the May Wall! The May Wall! And you have to think with the Kitsune Rush as well in the over Overclock coming through, what a combo! Picks coming in soon, Overclock on both sides being used, and G-Scales, it's going to fall on what you do with your Annihilation. Sloth only at 40%, not going to have enough time, and right now, as these alts are going to start coming down, there it is, the Nano into the freeze, and it's assuming that G-Scales is going to be is. the one to finish it out with the Annihilation! It's all going down, losing the tank, losing the BAP, it's going to be the Lucio lost as well, no more supports, no more healing! Barely any damage, and that's going to be all she wrote. St. Clair finishing it out. They beat St. John's. What an amazing game from St. Clair. St. John's performed, met them at every stage of the game. And as you can see, St. John's had so much skill to speak of here as Haruka did get the play of the game right there with that bob. But St. Clair just had the sheer will and determination to push on through. They never gave up and they just managed to win it out that many times more. I have no words. I, <laughs> I have no words. I'm so tired after that series that was That was, that was not probably it, one of the It's not it. It's not it. We have game another one. Game series one is done. right now on Varsity Overwatch as well. But like Oh my god, like what a series from wow. the Academy side. So glad they came out on top. That was probably the best Overwatch series I've ever casted. That was amazing. That just came down to the wire each and every single time. Those teams were so evenly matched. It was so perfectly matched that it was just such a good brawl on each side. And I hope that this is just how all Overwatch matches are after this patch. Maybe this is just the magic patch that made it the best game ever. <laughs> Who knows? Who's to say? I, look, I mean... <laughs> We just talk. <laughs> like, exactly. like, there's nothing I can say right now. I'm absolutely <laughs> rendered speechless. Um, I'm just trying to think. Like, oh, yeah, we, was... there's just so much to go over right now. I think that uh, Grubby and th and the Holy Juan were doing such a good job there, but it really just came down. Look, there's a reason why he's the tank for a reason. G, yeah, G scales locked in, and he is totally the reason off the back of that Nano and May alt as well. They cleaned it up, but even just the play to get St. Clair to that second point as well, you know, it just so many things needed to happen there in order for St. Clair to pull it together. He was Somehow just, they find a way. He was just so consistent throughout the entire series. He was the anchor for the team. Everybody rallied around him, and it was just amazing. But... That's not all the Overwatch we have here today. We also have the Varsity game. Here we are, Lijong Tower looking to be the first map. First point did go over to Rochester Institute of Technology. They are doing an amazing job so far. Saints got a first good initial burst of percentage, but wow, they are all falling down in record time. Oh wait, no, the Saints yeah, did get it. I had it backwards, my Saints, bad. The Saints have that first point. The one that I want to focus on right now, Noxious. A lot of people might realize, hey, you know, that name does sound familiar. Yeah, it's because he's a part of Team Canada, at least for the uh, Overwatch World Cup that happened this past summer. So I want to see, I saw him on the far, but he's going to switch on the May. It's truly just sublime what he does. And to watch the master at his craft is going to be something that I look forward to casting. Right now, we see though, interesting lineups, and I wonder how the higher meta teams work it. It seems that both of them elect and go for that Junker Queen, and they really do like to use that Ana as well. It seems like Ana and Bab right now, in terms of mass healing, are kind of a lock for most teams right now, as they usually elect to kind of go with a Lucio to speed up their players as well on the back foot. A pretty good map as well there, a point from Rochester Institute of Technology. They're able to find that one and tie it up at one apiece. Yeah, we're already on the last point here for map one. 
it's just a toss-up on who's going to take it because Rochester looked very clean on that mm -hmm. last point. St. Clair did win the first one. They did get half or rough or 40% of the last one as well, but you know, you never, it changes from point to point and St. Clair just looked a little bit messier on that second point. So we'll see if they can clutch it up here and go up against Rochester. They're switching to the Ramatra, so maybe it'll work out for them a little bit better. But hey, we have all the time in the world to analyze here as we do go into a little bit of a pause. Right, and I mean, I think a player to keep my eyes on, obviously, you know, I was talking about Noxious to the fans at home, but Tread, we have a new player on our varsity team. He is our big guy on the tank. And last time I was casting, I believe his debut was... He went about like 33 and 0. Oh, jeez. Like they absolutely on rolled. Yeah, they absolutely wow. rolled the other team. Uh, but Tread had just about as good of a debut as you could possibly get. He was really mainly seen on the Doomfist as well. I believe it was kind of a team that, you know, they believed they were going to be anyway. So a couple of like meme lineups coming out from St. Clair. But Tread just absolutely dominated the backline on that Doomfist. I want to really see what he locks in with here and uses on the Ramatra. As so far from what we can get from this latest patch, it seems that Ramatra is sort of the tank to go to on these point and uh, payload maps. Yeah, I didn't quite look at the patch notes for his changes, but maybe it was just the health changes across the board made him that much more viable. And as we've seen, the Annihilation just kind of secures an entire area around those points. So, I don't know, maybe he's just that go-to tank nowadays. But... I'm just excited to see how this next point is going to shape up. It's looking to be very, very interesting. It's one run right now, one one right now. Whoever takes this first uh, point in the series is going to have a lot more breathing room going forward. They could probably now, even experiment. I will a little say, bit more. I do have game audio in my ear. I do as well. I'm, so I wonder. I'm not if trying this, to put if, that out in case yeah, there's another pause, it, but it, it, just in case there's <laughs> another pause, but. Oh As no, we we're right back at it. it. Yeah, there we go. St. Clair is going to actually be on, I believe, a retake. Yep, they're going to get it. But Rochester was able to get the first 30% down. So a good initial hold from Rochester. And now they have to see how they're going to rebound back. Let's take a look at a couple of the lineups here. It seems like Rochester really does like this Junker Queen. They used him, or her, sorry, in the first uh, map, as, or it's the first couple of points. So you got to wonder, like, maybe they just really love to rely on this lineup. The Freeze coming in on the other side. Actually, both Freezes going down. Wow. Battle of Freezes right now. Cool Venn diagram but going it on. It seems like... From what we can get, everything's just kind of being nullified. First pick coming out onto crime as well, and that's usually just how it rolls. With the tank down, you have to assume the roll is incoming. If you are St. Clair, you need to retreat. Not really a point in trying to hold here. It is going to be RIT's point. Yeah, one's going to go over to them. St. Clair did get initial sight control, it looked like. They got a nice 40%, but RIT is there to meet them. They flip the point over, going over to them. All right, Soaks keeping the team nice and healthy with the speed boost. That's going to be a lot to go in there. Swapping back and forth, trying to take out this DPS. Tread got very, very low. He's hanging on by a thread of health. A huge sound barrier keeps him up and alive, though. As the damage from Rochester is just looking so, so, so strong. And the tank is just anchoring down or around that little health mark right now. Tries to take out, slow them down, taking out this Junker Queen. There they go. That's the pick that they needed. Now they can try and take out the Squishies. Yep. That's one, that's two, and that's looking to be three. <laughs> two's and not that is out the of that. sight for St. Clair. But now, I'm going to try and equalize the points. It's 70% going over to Rochester. They have their work cut out for them. Right, but I mean, you have to assume St. Clair, you know, Rochester needs to get this point back many to do so quickly. St. Clair cannot afford to give it up. This yes. is most likely going to be the team fight that pretty much capitalizes and cements the entire point right now, and I believe what should be the map. So it's going to be interesting to see what both teams come out with as the freeze does come down on the side of St. Clair. It's going to find the tank. That's a beautiful what? pick. And the ledge is too. <laughs> <They jumped laughs> it seems off. like they're just going to elect to jump off. I suppose they were maybe trying to lost the you know, tank. They lost the tank, and I'm, I'm guessing what they're trying to do is they're banking on the fact that they can get back and touch. They were just trying to regroup and respawn. That's going to be exactly what happens. The freeze going down on the side of the May for Rochester Institute of Technology, and they're going to find the picks necessary to try to push 
up. St. Clair then responding back with three of their own. It just isn't happening. I thought the pick on Noxious was going to be what they needed, but it didn't happen at all. St. Clair seemed to be cleaning up perfectly. And with the overtime looming and the Lucio gone, it seems like this is going to be St. Clair's point. Yeah, that point's gonna go over to St. Clair. What dominance there. Rochester trying to have very quick reaction time, all jumping off of the tank, trying to get one last push. And it looked like it worked out, but St. Clair I, I, just had the control there. I thought it was looking really good when they got the first pick. I thought it was what it was necessary and what they needed in order to yes. go up forward and push a little more with that less damage on the May, obviously. But I mean, St. Clair just absolutely holding. Wow. And a play from Frost coming in too. Finds one with the pulse bomb. Finds, finds three, another four, I think. Weapon. He's gonna find four, yeah. So, <laughs> one with the primary, another with the pulse bomb. Follow up, two with the primary. Beautiful play there by Frost. But at the end of the day, St. Clair is going to take that first map. An amazing first map. Rochester had an amazing uh, few battles there, but St. Clair just ended up coming out on top. Especially with that with play of the game there that we saw there. Both teams looking so even. They're just looking very good. I think. Are we gonna get another five maps? Are we gonna get another five <laughs> we'll maps see. out of we'll see. out of the varsity side this time? Yeah, oh, it's, it's only uh, time will tell. Yes, but with all that said, we're gonna throw it to a quick break, and we'll be right back with more Overwatch and probably more COD once we return. Absolutely. So don't go anywhere. and welcome to our second game of the series of Rochester Institute of Technology versus St. Clair College Varsity. Here we are on King's Row. We are second half of <laughs> Payload Map. It's looking to be a great fight. Uh, once again, I'm Matthias, also known as Matthias, and I'm joined by Patrick Smoke Chambers. Here we are. How's this looking out for you? So immediately what I want to point out is Tread on the attack on King's Row. Last time I saw him when he went 34-0, was playing that Doom Fist. He's hopping on it yet again. So maybe I was wrong. Maybe he's just a Doom Fist god. We will see. However, right now, as St. Clair do take this first point, they're already on payload. And with almost six minutes to get it to the first uh, checkpoint, you have to think so far the attack is going pretty well for them. It's going very well for them. Oh, Tread getting a nice flank, punching three people at once. He's gonna have to try and get out of here though. He's very overextended. He's going for another big punch there, and he gets one. Knocks up two here. Gonna slam down on oh my. third. And there it is. He's just 
going through the team right now. Now he's in a 1v1 with the tank, make that 2v1. No way, Lucio he finds there. his Lucio. He does, but it goes down. <laughs> but that's an amazing couple of picks there. Rochester going to have to back off and just let the payload cruise up. Yeah, wow. I mean, I, that just shows you, right? Like, Tread is just so aggressive on that Doomfist, and it works, and Crime and the Zen working in tandem to pick off the tank on the other side as well, the Junker Queen. And you got to think right now, yeah. as we come to a little bit of a stalemate, we can talk about alt economy a little bit. St. Clair definitely it. on the upswing. As you kind of see, they have four out of five with the, uh, you know, tranquility uh, coming in soon. Just 25 more percent yes, to go. Looking, uh, it's looking that. to be five to five very soon. Yeah, because you got to think, right? Like on the other side, Rochester oh, only available. But now let's see what it counts for. Dragons coming out, and that should clear out a little bit of space for St. Clair to get aggressive. It's going to be just that. Both supports going down. No more healing on the tank, and that should be the next pick. It is going to be exactly that. Tracer v. Tracer, the recall into the health pack, but it's not going to matter right now. Noxious just doing so much of a better job. It's going to find it with a punch. Razor with a crit onto the Soge as well. Really good push so far from St. Clair, and in doing so, they only have to burn two ults. Exactly, and they are just cruising on through with little contestation from Rochester. Rochester does have a few alts to use now. They have the Junker Queen ult, they have uh, the Overclock as well. So they have a few chances to make something work here. There's a Pulse Bomb. Wow, it almost got onto Lucio from up there. But Frost is going to push on through. He's going to take them down, but it's not going to quite work Tread out. is on an absolute heater. Wow, he's just, uh, just a, a, a force of nature at this point, tearing on through the enemy team. He was the team kill. Like, <laughs> everyone low, he's going to pop the Meteor Strike, and then he's just going to find more. Give him his money. Give me my money. Give St. Clair their money. They're doing so good right now with 430 left as Noxious puts that in all chat. And he really should. They're just doing so well. Oh, I don't know. However, now. as I say that, you know, sometimes you talk a little bit too much and you get smacked back for it. So it's going to be uh, not too much of a uh, big commit, though, from St. Clair. They can allow to just kind of <laughs> play the time. It's only as if they have, oh, I don't know, about Look four minutes and change. <laughs> Look at them dance around yeah, the enemy like, team. Yeah, like, just has to try to play his life just dancing around the enemy team, trying to not get any shots onto him. No he can just kind him. of go back and forth from building to building. He just has to wait for a support to kind of assist him in his aid before he does want to commit to anything massive. And right now, as the, Jake, as the Junker Queen does drop down oh, and the ult. ult is popped, there's a sound it barrier. seems like right now, RIT is just using everything. And Blackjack is going to find two on the side of the BAP as well. Nicely said, Matthias. Tread being low on health, it's going to be an RIT hold. They burn three alts for it, but definitely worth the bang for their buck as they are able to find that. St. Clair on the comeback now, looking like they are probably going to have four alts for this next push. Yeah, they have a great switch to the Zarya as well exactly the Zarya switch is interesting they're gonna have a great first push here especially with that Zarya if they time it right you'll be able to block these doom fist punches just one of the few things that can do that but wow look at that if he yeah. goes to the back line you can't really block that he has the ult everybody well. get the spawn he's popping the <laughs> window but it's all for naught the team is just in disarray the tank is all alone here and now with the harmony everybody's gonna be nice and healthy and that's gonna be it tread taking the tank down taking the support down with Noxious Crime getting the snipe on Blackjack. They're all falling down. This and is the tracer goes for the touch. Just can't have to be recall. Legal. And it's a very, <laughs> very much so as they just completely push through to the end of this point with two minutes forty remaining. RIT has their work cut out for them. Just just give me money. <laughs> like that's what Noxious is saying in chat right now. He just wants the money. Tread is just going absolutely insane. Esau on the other side just saying, are you okay? And <laughs> Nasha just says, no, he is not. He's just uh, going a little gamer right now, you know? Right back in the swing of things, excited about the new patch. But nonetheless, this game is off to a great star start. Rochester has a lot of work to do. They need to bring it all the way and still try and beat out the time that St. Clair ha has shown there. They just did a great job. I'm excited to see what the lineup is going to be for game or er, for 
the, the second point here. I was going to say game two, but it is game two, but second half of game two, that is. Interesting that they're running the Doomfist on defense as well, but honestly, after the showing that Tread had in that first half, what are you going to do? Tell him to get off of it? Like, what, like, who are you to speak on that if, if that's true? Tread was an absolutely dominant force on that Doom that first half, as everyone just saw. I mean, you just have to assume with the Tracer as well, it's going to be a fairly aggressive lineup here. I'm assuming they're just going to wait for basically Crime to find a first pick off the back of the Widowmaker. And as soon as that happens, it's just going to be a rush through. So that's going to be what they play for. Let's see how St. Clair defends. And immediately, like Frost on the Widow, just put down to 1 HP before getting healed. Quick damage utility being thrown out right now. And as this Doom Fist on the side of Tread just <laughs> cleans up the Winston. I mean, this is just absolutely absurd. It's not anything you see. Like, ladies and gentlemen, what we're seeing right now is not simple play. Doom is such a hard character sometimes to play with, especially because you need to be able to understand when you need to get out of dodge. I don't even understand why the other tank is trying to compete with the <laughs> Doom Fist. I mean, if he does, fair dues to him. But as far as I'm concerned, this has just been an absolute diff on the side of tank. Tread looking to just kind of keep the effort strong and right now let's wow. see with that snipe off the back of frost beautiful shot can rit find something to keep going it's gonna be tough they have their work cut out for them here they need to find some picks here they found the pick with the widow but it might not be enough they need to get tread down and that is what they just did that here that should be point that is looking to be point. It's going to be tough to come back from that. No tank, no support, no DPS, even near the site. That site's going to go over to Rochester here. And Rochester finally doing what they needed to do. They have that first pick off of the Widow. The, the Doomfist can just finally go in and do the damage. It's what they needed to happen. Of course, that far spawn really influencing the team fight. And honestly, RIT played it beautifully there. No now they have 445, and with the wall hacks going down, you gotta think. They know exactly Ooh. when Tread's gonna re peek here. Big snipe on Tread. Huge snipe and a lot of damage coming through. St. Clair just have to play a little bit patient. We got we can talk about alt right now, alt economy. We see that the Meteor Strike and the Nano are going to come into the conversation here as well as the Zen alt. So with that pick going down, that is a huge one on the side of RIT. They're going to find the Ana and Crime as well. Isol doing such a good job on this Genji, assisting that Doom in the backline push. Yeah, they're just so good at diving down on one lonely player and making sure they just deal out the DPS to take them down in record time. But look at Abdon just chasing these two squishies there, going all the way to commit and ult just on two of them. And now uh, Noxious trying to get out of here, trying to find anything that can make that work, but Abdon gonna get two out of that. Now to me, again, like we, we can say it all we want. It could just be a build sort of thing where he wants to build sooner so we can have it for that next engagement. But I mean, I'm gonna say it. I think Abdon's a little bit angry right now. And he's just taking out his rage on the two squishies. Wow, Essel. It's more than justifiable. Tread finding one and Essel finding yet another two. He has been the voice of reason right now for RIT getting them back into this fight. And right now, it might just be a tale of two teams that are almost just near flawless on the attacking side. Just as St. Clair College did, it seems like RIT has immediately switched it back up on them. I might have to correct you on that Doomfist because Adbon is just no, making it No, he's destroying, work. right? Yeah, like, okay, yeah, maybe Doomfist make me, is just good Make right me now. eat my own <laughs> words because Adbon, you got to give him credit where credit's due. He is absolutely doing amazing on this attack right now. And it might just be the, the thing, I was trying to get to it, the tale of just simply two teams that are really good on attack. Genji Blade being found out and it's going to find the Ana. And now Nox is trying to refrag back on the Kiri and finding another two. one on the Genji before it gets traded back out from the Lucio. No supports now on the side of, I believe it was RIT. And now they have to just play patient as this push stalls out yeah it's gonna go back a little bit further they still have a minute to make it all the way to the end and equal St. Clair College's time so it's 
it's all a matter of St. Clair holding it here at this choke. There's a lot of time left on the board. There's a lot that could happen for RIT. But if St. Clair can just hold it here for long enough, they'll come out on top here. Tread finds the back line there, finds the support pushed up at a weird angle. I'm gonna try and turn that into a kill. It's not gonna quite work. He's having a little bit of a brawl here with the enemy Doomfist, trying to take out the supports, trying to take out anything that he can, but it's not quite working as Hadbon is there to meet him there. Gets the nice punch on the Genji, but it's not enough. Tread going down, and now wow. it's gonna just be a complete rollover for RIT. They're gonna push on through. No one's gonna be there to stop him without Tread, without the tank. They're not gonna have much in the way of mitigation. The kick coming in to finish off the Doomfist is key, however, to stall this push. But I'm going to say it right now. No matter the outcome of this match and no matter the outcome of this map, Abdun, I want to apologize. I was completely <laughs> wrong about you. You just had to show me exactly what you could do on the attack on the oh, Doomfist. He was doing a really good job so far of making this push work for his team. And regardless <laughs> of if they lose or win this map, it ha you cannot deny the fact that he hasn't done a very good job up until now of keeping his team in it. Yeah, he's been doing a great job at keeping the team in it, but they do need to make that last little stretch. It's not over for St. Clair. They still have everybody up and healthy. They don't. They have one alt on the online for the support there. They have Zen alt that could be used in a pinch if things start to go south. But it looks like things are going pretty good from the get the. Oh, trade what a there. pick from Crime! Yeah, that was a major pick with the sniper, and looking to be another pick as well. That's from Frost. Frost there. Tread Three frag. Getting one right back though, shutting that widow down, getting the support down and now with only two minutes left on the clock it's looking kind of dire here for RIT they seem to make it the tank switch again from RIT as well oh, back to the Zarya but that didn't work out for them on the defense maybe on offense this will be the play I saw Woo! major reflect on the Anna there wow what reaction time and now they're gonna commit all their alts to one final push. The oh, but the <laughs> dragon's down the side of the Katsune. And the blade as well. Essel gets a double kill. Moving in, looking for a third. There's the harmony, but it's not gonna Woo! be enough. And Essel gets three, and he <laughs> the Sen gets pooped off. And that is going uh -huh. to be an equalizing round for RIT, but they still have less time at St. Clair College. You know, it was funny. We saw Isil just in all chat as well. Noxious was saying to give him his money, and Isil said, are you okay? Yeah, and he proved that. He proved it. He <laughs> absolutely he proved it that he wasn't. I mean, Noxious just admitted to himself. He, he literally said no. Um, but Isil, you know, playing with a chip on his shoulder, Advon playing with a chip on his shoulder, RIT as a whole playing with that chip on their shoulder. And it just shows sometimes when a team gets really, really passionate, you think you have them figured out, yeah, you don't. Because right now, RIT just manned an attack that was almost on the same level as that St. Clair one, just a minute and a half shorter. Or, sorry, yes, longer. Um, nevertheless, they get the three points, and that's what matters in the long uh, run. The tough part, though, for them is they are going to have to try and make this push within one minute and 17 seconds. And right. this first push either goes amazingly or it is dragged out for a long time. So they only have one or two good pushes in here to cap the point and try and take the payload as far as they can. They have all the work cut out for them. And it looks like the team comps are gonna be the same. Actually, Isol gonna switch to the Pharah, try and be a surprise pick, but does he know there is a Hanzo waiting for him? It's going to be interesting, especially because even a Hanzo headshot right now, if I'm mistaken, Farah has how much health as of the current uh, rework? I don't know the exact number, but we'll be able to see it soon once we observe them here. Because I'm almost certain Hanzo headshot's 250, so therefore, if the Farah does have a little more than 250, she could withstand that first shot. So it's going to have to be kind of key to watch that Hanzo versus Farah matchup. As the first picks come in, it's going to be Soaks to get one onto the tank. And this is very critical right now because as this team push kind of withers away and withers down, you're going to find oh, no. that as Tread finds the next two, wow. it's going to be a hold from St. Clair. And now a dire situation has just become more dire. There are now 25 Five seconds and right now you have to almost overextend oh, Tread no. just doing a little bit of teabagging to try to get onto the nerves of the players on RIT them not trying to fall forward and do so it is going to be the push now coming out and this is quite literally 
everything on the table. If you have anything that you can do, any plans, any strats, you need to use it. Deflect coming out onto Soaks. That's a huge kill. But the Lucio going down as well from the Storm Arrow is also massive. Isol is just finding pick after pick. Adbon finding one of the Noxious. No more DPS. And it appears that if they can just try to get Tread down, he's going to elect wow. to... Get out 20. of dodge. It is going to be the point that is going to be captured by RIT. And in the last second, they do get the point. However, with overtime now on the clock, you need to try to make the best of this push. All St. Clair most likely need here, even with the near spawn, is just to kill on this tank. And you would think that it would be all over from there. Yeah, they have one last push here. They are in the overtime. We'll see how far they can push it. They're setting the mark for St. Clair to meet. And right now, it's looking to be not very far as St. Clair is just burning through yep, them right now. They have the so many ults. Nox just getting double kills. And now, Tread getting one more. And there's the yep. Doomfist ult. Isol, last one standing, but not going to be able to touch. And as I said, the tank was the first one down, and immediately after that, domino effect, as that overtime counter is not going to wait for you to come back to the payload. So, a decent hold from St. Clair, and now they just have to try to be the better of on the attacking side. Yeah, they just have to try a little bit harder here on attack, and they have the time to do so. They had more time to play with than Rochester did. So it's a little bit of a toss-up if Rochester can prevent them from getting to this first point for quite a while. I think they'll be in a great spot, but if that point flips over relatively quick, quickly or within the same time frame that RAT did it, it's not looking good for them as they will have that much more time to just push it to the point with which they need to. So it's it's looking to be a, a very close little bit, but St. Clair College does have the advantage right now. This is going to be so fun to watch because you just watch to where St. Clair needs to put this payload. It's on a choke point. So it's just <laughs> going to come down to literally who plays the choke point better. RIT exactly. throwing out the Torbjorn on the King's Row defense. I am surprised this is the first time we've seen the Torb come out in this match on the King's Row defense. Usually a pretty solid pick, uh, but we're gonna see how it works out. As of right now, the pre-rock being thrown out, it is going to be everything all hands on deck from RIT to hold this point as long as they can. St. Clair, they just have to wait. The anti's gonna go through and it's most likely, nope, never mind. just going to be an amplifier for the health of the Doom. And now as he charges in, it's just going to try to find a little bit of pick damage, most likely setting up to see if they can get a quick pick from Crime on that Hanzo. There's going to be the first opener though onto Soaks. And as the kind of picks go down, as that turret gets destroyed on the side of the Torb, you just have to think right now, St. Clair can afford to give up the pick. They still have a little bit of time, but the second that first pick goes down for St. Clair, things are going to start to speed up, especially when it's one like the Baptiste. Great job from Isol just to refrag there onto the Noxious, onto that Tracer, just buying them some time. Tried on low health, has to try to dive out to avoid the rock, seeking back for his healers. And right now, RIT doing a really good job to just allow the BAP that time to come back. However, with the Sigma in a bad position, you have to think that they're throwing down the lamp on the side of the BAP. That's going to be exactly what happened to try to hold that Sigma's health back up. And now you have to assume it's going to get really, really, really drastic as the Sigma goes down. Wow, that should be the chain effects down. coming down. But Esau finding two, that's both supports. However, it might be a little too much to handle. Noxious finding the last two on the DPS. It should be St. Clair to get the point. And right now, if you're RIT, you need to run as fast as you can to meet up with your Sigma and try to find that hold onto the choke. It's going to be the Doomfist on Tread, trying to see if he can, you know, negate that hold. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a very close, close match. The Genji reflects the Pulse Bomb also on the Tracer. That was very, very close. He teleported right in time here. And now Tread making the last push. He does have Doomfist ult to clear out this payload. Torbjorn Lava though up as well in the Dragon right. Blade too. It's going to be very, very close here. There's the Dragons to stop the choke. Wow, someone dashes in there. Torb uses the oh, ult. The lava. the lava, there it is. It's coming down to the last 30 seconds. They're doing an amazing job at holding it. They're only 0.64 <laughs> oh 
meters away. Sick hold as well. You gotta think right now. RIT may have just been able to do it. They might have it as the meters get pushed back. If they can protect this Sigma, it's going to be massive. That turret falling down is big though. The transcendence is going to come out from the, the Zenyatta. It's going to all go down. Everyone throwing all their ults onto the table. Tread, when are you gonna use this meteor strike? I'm gonna get the answer right now. He needs to They're try to find back. some picks. There's gonna be one on the map, and he needs to try to stay alive. He's going to get gunned down though from the Sigma, and RIT have done such a great job of holding this. It almost looked impossible, but I believe right now, if they can just try to hold point, hold on though, the Sigma is getting low. They are touching right now, and right now it seems like the Sigma just needs to find the one pick, the support staying alive. Oh no, with the rock, it's going to be almost all <laughs> she back. wrote, but they keep on coming back and back again. The overload on the Torbjorn, not able to clear off Tread just yet. However, the Sigma is dead now, and with the Symmetra teleport, a beautiful play by St. Clair. They get themselves back onto the point. They can try to find the kill under the Torbjorn. The turret down in low health. It's gonna be a pick. It's gonna be a retake. It's gonna be St. Clair with the win. What a way to end the match. It couldn't get any closer. A final, final push from Shred. He managed to survive and struggle on and got the win for his team. And uh, <laughs> what a match from Tread. He really showcased his his full potential here in this Doomfist here. Look at that, just tearing through the enemy team. Matthias, we have another map to go as well. Yeah, we have another map or three more maps potentially. Right. If RIT <laughs> keeps playing like that, bring it down to the wire every single time. We're going to be here oh, quite a long while. Uh. But also, don't forget, that's not the only game. We have a COD we have. series we coming up entire wow. COD series that we haven't even started. We haven't even taken a look at that one, which is going to be against Eastern Michigan University, which should be another great game. But what a stacked game we have here. <laughs> Like, what an amazing game day. It's the first stacked one we've had in this, a while. We've had some good ones, you know, but we haven't had four games. We haven't had them all be this close. Amazing games. Everyone who's watched me broadcast before, anyone who's watched me cast before, you know my speciality. Like, you know, my specialties are Rocket League and Siege. And I've had some great moments casting Rocket League and some beautiful moments casting Siege. But this has to be the most fun stream I think I've ever cast before. <laughs> this has been an absolutely amazing game day. Series just going back and forth, back and forth. The only one that wasn't really close was the COD series from earlier. And even then, how could you not say that wasn't fun when KB <laughs> was literally dropping like 75 combined kills over three points? So it's just absolutely ridiculous. This has been such a treat to cast. And I just can't wait to get more action out of it. Me too. That was amazing. And also, uh, it's just been so great to see the competition on both sides. St. John's doing an amazing job in that academy game. And not the kind of RIT. They held on to the last moment there in the last game. And also the game, previous game, they brought it to the third map. Brought it down to the last few points. It's been so close in these Overwatch games. And I'm... Just amazed to see it, especially on patch day two. You'd think one side would really hmm. figure it out more than the other, but it seems to be very, very even now. I'm still like thinking about frame for frame, <laughs> right? St. Clair, you think it's over, the supports touch the point for like literally a millisecond. The rocket's thrown at the Ana, and then out of nowhere, the genius move to switch to the Sim. The teleporter goes down, the Torb turret goes out. He has no more overclock. It just, it was absolute pandemonium, but we don't even have time to break it down because now we're getting into a Flashpoint game. Yeah, here we are. It looks to be a Junkertown Flashpoint here as they're just getting right into the swing of things here. Tread pushing on through on his Ramatra, but he's getting really burned down here by the Zarya. That's going to be the tank down from St. Clair College. RIT looking to take this first flashpoint. He's still getting a nice kill there. Crime getting one right back, though. It's very back and forth, but without a tank, St. Clair has nothing to rally behind. Right? And I mean, look, I, I, to cover this is just, it's insane after the game we just came off of. But we have to do it nevertheless with Zarya on 88 charge. I want to take a look at a couple of the lineups and as well as the COD, our last series getting underway. St. Clair versus Eastern Michigan University. 
And so far, it seems like St. Clair having the advantage on the hard point. Remember, if you guys get tired of hearing me and Matthias cast, I'll state it for the third time. I don't know why you would, but you can put down <laughs> exclamation mark streams in the chat and it will take you to the pure gameplay streams if that is what you want. Let's talk about Adbon right now. He's finding the two pick as well. Frost cleaning up. They're doing a very good job so far. RIT is showing that they are no slouches when it comes to Flashpoint halfway through the first one. Yeah, they're doing an amazing job right now. Adbon just getting these picks when they're needed and just really not being able to be taken down by St. Clair, timing the Zarya bubbles perfectly, covering all his teammates as well. He's playing as perfect as you can. There's a big commit there from St. Clair. They're trying to get in here, but they're not finding any picks as they're all falling down. Adbon finds the one on Noxious. That's going to be a huge pick for them. And as the splash point is taking up, there's zero contesta contestation from St. Clair. They're unable to touch, they're unable to do anything here as more That and pick's more. coming in for sure. Yeah, yep. Tread goes down, Easel mm -hmm. gets another. This map is looking all Rochester right now. Look at Frost just getting a double for no reason there right at the end. Because why not? You know, you're just delaying the time to get to that next point to just get set to get your defensive priorities and positioning straight there is a point for it however it then becomes a little bit controversial if you then give yourself up on the other side however not going to happen frost being very careful and calculated with his picks doing a very good job and rit i mean wow you want to wonder how to bounce back from a game that we just witnessed yeah, they're That's looking how exactly how you want to do it. They're looking to prove something here, and there's the graviton, <laughs> gravity plugs there from, I believe that the Zarya ult there. Storm is he gonna go down or take? They put Katsuni in B2. They literally just used everything, and as the annihilation comes in right now, it's going to be all Saint Clair on the pick board so far. Not just finding two. He's uh, probably going to elect to save the freeze, just trying to find that last pick. Tried cleaning up another two with the alternate fist form. Beautifully played there. I have. No words to sum up how Tread's performance tonight has been. He has just made his debut performance. I thought it was impressive enough, but to me, he's absolutely, with the stakes, blown that one out of the water. I'm so thoroughly impressed with what this team has shown so far, but you have to give it to RIT as well. They are competing. I know it says 2-0 so far on maps, but it has been anything but that. Everything usually coming down to an overtime contestions, oh, and as Dragon the Blade. Benji Blade comes down with all the alts on the damage screen down as well it's going to be an absolute back and forth surge of team pushes but it's, and it's just doing exactly what i've been saying it is team kill after team kill pick after pick they're finding absolutely everything they want here rit capping yet again they just have to be careful though because if they give this flash point up the chance they get it back is more than likely not going to happen yeah rochester just looking very good right now that team wipe they got it when they needed it and now it's up to St. Clair to try and do it right back and Oxus does have the blizzard online and Tread actually switching to the Zarya to match Adbon there might be what they need to break through this defense a little bit more uh, flexibility here and movement potential here now Abdon moving in trying to defend against the Zarya he's gonna get shielded out Soaks trying to move in there trying to heal his team there is the freeze coming out and he has no shields to speak of. He's gonna be frozen solid. Storm's gonna get one. Asil gonna get the other there. And that's gonna be rough for the Saints. They have no more supports. They have nothing to rally behind. Tread is just gonna have to try and get out here. RIT showing up strong. They're trying to prove to the Saints that Flashpoint is their game mode. So far, their team comp has been doing absolutely nothing short of wonders. And as the Graviton Surge comes down, it's going to find yet another pick onto Crime. The Tracer should go down easy. This is absolutely beautiful play from RIT as they clean up the BAP lamp. And I'm assuming he's going to be next off the board. There it is. Tread trying to switch the Zarya. But I think we know right now who the better one of the two looks to be right now. Right now is it is true Abdon does have his full team behind him but that is for the reason that they have just absolutely <laughs> wiped St. Clair off of this second flashpoint. Exactly, the entire team is performing very, very well right now. Two flashpoints and St. Clair has zero to speak of. Rochester could potentially win it all right here. St. Clair is gonna have to put their all into this. It's gonna be a very tough fight. There is the alt. 
Can they make something of this? They're trying to get a kill. They're trying to make something, anything happen. And they're unable to make much happen at all. And now, Sinkhead might have watch an He's so low on health, and as the surge comes down, it's going to be Abdun getting picked off by Crime. That is such a huge pick. You have to assume that it's going to then go back and forth. Isol next to find the board. They're just hunting right now, hunting RIT. Crime with another knock, just with one, and that should be the team kill as well. Coming out from St. Clair College. They take the retake back, and quick, I might add, but they have to do quite a number in this Flashpoint game if they want to get back into it. Yeah, they have a lot on the line here. They need to play at their best capabilities here, which they are now doing. It seems like the adjustment to the Zarya was a little bit messy, but now they're finally getting into the swing of things. It's all about finding that rhythm against the enemy Zarya, right? You don't want to bubble when they're bubbling. You want to be the last one to have that bubble ready, or at least have your team ready to, to help help you out there. But we're seeing the Kiriko ult. We're seeing a lot of alts on the board right now. We're seeing the Bab window come up from Razor. And it looks like St. Clair gets three oh, kills, wow. Isol. but Isol's there to equalize it here with the two kills of the Dragon Blade, but Tread shuts it right down. I mean, any time that RIT needs something to go their way, it always seems like Isol on the side of those massive Genji Blades just comes in <laughs> and God's about to end. wipes. <laughs> Cod's about to what, uh, end. Yeah, it looks I like... I mean, no, 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 the, just the first point. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, the yeah. hard point being dominated so far. Sinclair, just the first game, other but I just want to point out. First game, and wow, are they really going to finish this out 250 to like 80? Yes. That is absolutely insane. They're all Very warmed up. 73, I mean, oh man, after the first series, you just have to think that Brennan, KB, GMG, and I believe the last Priestly, you have to think that they are just all warmed up, ready to go. So, right now, I expect nothing short of brilliance from our COD team, and they are giving it to us. I believe I see Priestly with 26 and 9. That's I think insane. Brandon's 25 and 8 as well. Just absolutely stupid stat lines out of those two, combining for over 50 <laughs> kills together. Speaking of stupid here, this is a very stupidly awesome game as we're here on this next flashpoint. It looks like the Saints are cruising on through, getting three kills. Frost getting one in return. Soak's getting a nice double, though. Sports are down. St. Clair looking to take and keep control of this flashpoint here, and they need to to keep this game if, alive. If, if they, they can win it all here, reverse, reverse sweep, sweep flashpoint, they win. I mean, you got to think, right? You're RIT. You win this map. You what get, does that do for you? You get one, you get a few more chances to bring this. You get up a to few a game more chances five. to bring it up to a game five. Their mental has to be so strong right now if they want to get back into it. Saint Clair, they can smell victory. They know they have them on the doorstep of defeat. And as the graviton surge comes down, it's going to be an absolute slaughter fest. Abdon picking up two. Razor getting the bat lamp, but it's not going to have any effect. It's just an absolute team. Team wipe on the side of RIT, showing why Flashpoint seems to be their most dominant game mode so far. They are absolutely trouncing <laughs> the Saints, but they need to hold this Flashpoint in order to keep it going. I have to say, a little bit of a misplay from Tread just single alting the, the right. other Zarya because they still had two full charges of the shield and they were able to outlast the entire Isol, ult completely. Huge pick. Yeah, a huge pick from Isol. Isol just so consistent at finding those major picks and now Rochester racking up the percentages almost equalizing with the Saints looking to close this one out and take their first game in the series in a major manner I must add yeah and I mean right now I the Saints got to do anything in their power damage screen needs to go down at some point the beat drop needs to go down here it's going to be the Maywall as well beautifully placed on the side of Noxious to counter out the other damage screen. They need a touch, but right bro. now they need to touch, and the Maywall might have just delayed them the time that needed to have that effect. However, if they did put the damage screen, I won't lie, it was going to be a problem, and as Abdon puts down the Graviton Surge, Tread's going to find one on the Easel. but as Tread goes down and the overclock goes up, that should be, in theory, all she wrote as RIT showing 2-0. It doesn't matter. We want this map, and we are going to take it with everything we can do. 
what an amazing play from Rochester. After the last games ended so closely, they finally, finally had a game that really went their way. Get That's what four. you need. And now we get a game four and potentially game five if Rochester keeps playing at this level. I mean, look at that. Just an entire team wipe. Everybody covering everybody's angle. That's what you love to see in Overwatch. Those amazing team fights. Those amazing uh, cooperative plays. I just want to point out that the Holy Juan in a uh, chat, hashtag free crime. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the hashtag right now. Yeah. As we get into this fourth game, though, you have to think, right? Like, what can RIT do now in order to get back into it? I mean, they've shown such mental fortitude dealing with the first two games being so utterly close and now getting this one game back for themselves. I mean, it is Flashpoint, which is nice because it's a quick and easy one to quickly... Okay, one point, we're back on. Mm. Right now, if you're St. Clair, you have to capitalize. And if I'm St. Clair, you need to finish it. You do not want to see Flashpoint again. Speak speaking of St. Clair capitalizing, here we are in our COD game. And they won the first game in the series. Now we're on the second map. It's very, very good for St. Clair so far. It's S and D. See if it goes over their way, but it looks like it's gonna go their way as they find the first pick. Right, and right now Brandon just needs to watch. He knows They're the player through down. the door That's is going guy. to happen. Last one standing. A lot of the refrag just coming in. Brandon knows he just had to stay prone there. Player needs to make a play and go through the doors. And uh, that was a quick round. Sorry to Sinclair really there. likes. No, no, dude, no problem at all. Like, it's I over. mean, look, you can talk as much as you want here. You had to make a quick point out. I mean, St. Clair just has a habit so far of what I've seen. They just like to just run through the team, no matter if they're attacking or defending, on their first round of search. They've done exactly just that again. Yeah, they did, it, did she, that's it. And they're looking to do that again. Maybe that's just their first play is. Go fast, go loud, and then once you're on the attack, maybe make keep them guessing. They think they're gonna push very loud and proud, but they end up not. They're very sneakily on the site, using smoke to their advantage. Huge pick. Anxious funds one though. It's gonna be a huge pick. Bomb is down though. It's gonna be a little bit tough for the Saints to try and make this through. They got a nice pick. KB gets out as well. Bomb is ticking though. They need to try and get there quickly. Priestly finds another. There it is. He's moving on to site. One, two more left. One in garage. Trying to find the pick. Doesn't find it through the wall. 20 seconds left on the clock. They need to get here soon and fast. He knows where he is. Doesn't check the corner. Spins around the wrong the team way. Kill. He kills himself with a grenade. The team kill. KB finding one. And it goes the wrong way. It all went awry with that team kill. And I just want to point out, by the way, my apologies, I did state that GMG was playing, but I believe it's actually Zarin who's going to be stepping in for the varsity lineup. So it's going to be an incomplete uh, normal varsity team, obviously. But, you know, Zarin, very good COD player himself. You know, he's on there for a reason. He's in that lobby for a reason. Should be able to kind of pick up where the player would leave off. And so far, one for one on KD. You know, he's just playing fine. He's doing just that. I think that would have went the Saints way um, if not for that really unfortunate grenade right. I mean, kill that at TK, the last second. That TK between Brandon and Priestley, I mean, that that's round altering, right? So you got to think if that doesn't happen, maybe we're looking at a little 2-0 start here for St. Clair. But nevertheless, fair and square being won by Eastern Michigan, they're going to put it up 1-1 apiece. Zarin collecting the first blood, but he's going to be refragged. And I believe that is also... Then two refrags coming in from St. Clair. They are so good at just trading their initial gunfights back. And right now, uh -oh. Gates has to do absolutely everything to try to claw his way back here with this rival nine. Going to be low now. Only has one grenade in stock. I believe Pa has the dead silence as well. But it doesn't really matter though. Brandon aware of his position. It's going to be all she wrote for that round. St. Clair going up in lead 2-1. A good lead for St. Clair, I believe, at this rhythm. If they keep giving up a round and then winning a round, they will come out on top. So it's up to Eastern Michigan to try and win two in a row and try and take the lead here in points. But it's going to be tough because St. Clair is playing very, very well. Aside from the team kill, <laughs> they are doing very clean kills. They're doing very clean angles. So it's, it's, it's a little bit of a toss-up. Eastern Michigan, I think, needs to get these attacking pushes a little bit, a little bit more easily here. And as we get into our next round of SND.
I just want to point out right now that Brandon, if I'm viewing that right, yep, he has not died. So Brandon has <laughs> not died yet, uh, playing for life even in the round that we lost. Um, and wow, that is wow. going to be a very quick plant. Priestley getting the first blood now, and the second one coming out from KB as well. Third from KB, Brandon with the fourth to clean up. And that should be just the simple, the fuse. It was a really good take by Eastern Michigan. They get the diffuser down so fast, but sometimes positioning means more than time. And St. Clair showing just why sometimes you may want to wait a little longer than just simply bull rushing the site. Exactly. They lied and wait and wait for the bomb to be down. It looks like they're waiting to defuse too, just celebrating their victory. And waiting for the last second defuse, and they managed to do it. There they are, getting the win in the round. Right now, three to one. They're looking pretty good. Eastern Michigan needs to win a round and soon. Right, and I mean, as I was saying, you can kind of tell how these COD games go because our St. Clair team a lot better in those respawn game modes. So when you do not have that to your liking on the side of St. Clair and you're still doing really good on SND, it usually just kind of tells the, uh, the tale of how this match is going to go. Now, you know, St. Clair, they might be on a little bit of an advantage, you know, because they have had the warm-up series as well. They're coming off of a win. They're feeling good, and they're showing exactly why they are right now. Trades being found out. KB and Benito going down. And if you are Eastern Michigan right now, you need to try to find some sort of spark plug to ignite your game. Yeah, they need to find something, Aaron, but the Saints already have bombed down. Get a nice trade, but it's traded right back out. Brandon, the Saints are in the lead. It's all down to anxious, and I bet he's feeling anxious. That is his 2v1. Goes down. Both Saints, they don't even care about bomb. They know where the one guy is. Why wait? We're just going to push him with two <laughs> Renettis and just hope that our 2v1 gunfight works out. It's going to be exactly just that. One off the top of the building, one on the bottom. It's just been an absolute slaughter. And St. Clair are going to walk away with this with a fourth round. And I will point out yet again, Brendan has still not died. He's keeping that life. If only are this are there kill streaks in SD? I don't I don't believe so. Um, but it's it's a very hard to get. <laughs> I, I think you're only allowed to have a uh, cruise missile. But I've just even never before, seen them before. Yeah, so. I mean it's hard to get them, but yes, you are most likely going to see the cruise missile coming out uh, from Brandon at a certain point in time. There's two kills for St. Clair. They lost one, but they got two right back. Now it is a 2v3 scenario. Once again, Eastern Michigan just pushing on through. Probably wondering where to, to, to get the bomb here. Priestley finds one roaming around. It's all done to Sim. He's just playing for picks at this point, playing slow, trying to find something here. He's very, very anxious here, just looking around every corner, taking it very slowly. He finds one. Catches him off guard, and he doesn't get the kill even though he got the jump on uh, him. He's going to regret that one for a little while. <laughs> Obviously, you know, he was just making sure, he wanted to make sure he had the reaction down, he had the angle. But Priestley landed the first shot, and you just, you just got to think, you need that pick if you're Eastern Michigan. You can't afford to give chances like those up. You just got to give credit right now to the St. Clair guys. They are on fire and they're showing exactly why this has been the series that it's been so far, showing why it was an absolute sweep on hard point. And now, if they take this SD, they will find themselves in a best of five, two up, with a very hard run ahead of uh, them if you're on the side of Eastern Michigan in this next control map. Yeah, Brandon playing a nice pick with the grenade there, trades it out, and look at that, just with the pistol, one burst to Brandon takes him down. Now two kills go over to the side of St. Clair. Brendan finally dying. There he goes. There's a kill from Gates here. One last round here, potentially. It's a 1v2 situation. We've seen it before. Will Eastern Michigan be able to get the DPO? He finds a kill. It's a 1v1. Eastern Michigan looking to make it interesting. It's down to Zarin, the fill-in. Will he prove himself here? Will he carry the team here? I think he Zarin just not, walked unfortunately. right by him. He sadly didn't see Gates hiding in the plants. Gates very smart to just wait there, and uh, Zarin is actually, well, he is filling for one of the uh, players, but he yes. is the coach. I will say he is the coach. He's good. I was, just, team. Yeah. <laughs> I was hyping him up. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure, for sure. But for sure. sometimes it doesn't happen. Our coach up. But obviously, you know, he is meant to usually be in that coaching role. Going in as a player, I'm sure it is slightly difficult 
Uh, so just not being able to see gates in those plants, it is unfortunate. But St. Clair, nevertheless, are still up five to two on match points. And if you're Eastern Michigan, you're staring down the barrel of a long comeback victory that you need. And that's gonna only be one map. It will tie up the series at one, one but they need to find so much. And as these trades come through, it's going to be Zarin and KB on top. They're going to, to find the first three. And now Sim with a predatory missile, I believe, on the way. It's actually going to be a cheeky team kill. Maybe St. Clair underestimating their opponents a little bit. They might have given oh. this round away, but not quite. It was the team kill from the pred missile coming down. And I believe that was from Brendan's nine kill kill streak. <laughs> yeah. He's going to like to use it on his teammate. <laughs> KB, but uh, the pick it does come through as Brendan not only finds the kill on his teammate, he then finds the kill on the opposition. Amazing around her game from St. Clair College. Sir Michigan had their moments, weren't able to close that one out, so we're going over to game oh, three there. And but here where we are. Has this been Overwatch game four, and it is now the push map that we are going to see. Let's look at these lineups, analyze them quickly. So many alts going down, the beat and the Graviton surge as well. Noxious dying before he can find the Pulse Bomb, and now both teams just getting thrown into the ringer. It's going to be looking like RIT coming out on top, despite St. Clair using wow. two of their ultimates. RIT able to burn the beat and the Graviton surge by just using the beat alone. And that is going to be a very, very, very pivotal point in this matchup if they can gain some meters here. Yeah, if they can equalize the Zane's score or even exceed it, we only have a minute left. So whoever takes the lead here will probably take it all home. It's all down to this one push here. The gravity gravity comes out. The Zarya comes out, traps Tread, but he just barely makes it out alive. They're gonna back up here. Now things are looking very dire. Rochester, they lose one, they lose two. Noxious getting those key picks, and oh Tread getting the third. Gosh. The tank is down. 56 minutes or Noxious seconds left. Like four kills. That's insane. A team kill coming out from St. Clair. It's going to spell the end for RIT. There's barely any time left. There's still 40 seconds and there's still overtime. But with how far that robot's being pushed back, it must hurt. Every step it takes is a step on Rochester right now as they need to try and clutch this one out. And that robot on the side of Rochester, you could not feel like it is running any faster towards your own side. You need to try to find the counter here and move it back a couple of meters. Looking to do just so is that overclock on the side of Frost. But with the damage screen in pocket, it's going to be a retake coming out. And they need to stay on this payload now. Yeah, if they die on this payload, they even leave it for a second now. It is going to be over for them. They do have the initial push. It's looking pretty good for them. Gee. It's up to St. Clair to do one last good defensive stand With here. With no waltz, it can happen. They still have the damage screen in pocket on RIT, and it's going to take a minute. Crime is going to have his overclock. I'm assuming he's going to pop it immediately. And as this, and as the strafe comes down, what can they find? It's going to be tread onto the tank, and that should spell the end for RIT. Overclock. The overclock goes into effect. Soaks with one. Razor with another. It's going to be all she wrote. Noxious with the final pick. Team kill. And your Saints are going to reign victorious. In a 3-1 victory. Rochester really fought very, very hard in that game three. But the Saints fought a little bit harder in game four. Look at that. What an amazing series in Overwatch. Overwatch is back, baby. It's the new <laughs> <laughs> the new patch is amazing so far. And we just love seeing the players figure out the new meta so far. And look at this overclock from Crime. Getting two picks, getting three. And that looks to be a four pretty much. And what an amazing series of games we've had here today. But it's still not over. We still have one question mark one more well, game of cod <laughs> well obviously you know you never want to count a team out of it but so exactly. far it has been saints domination on the side of eastern michigan i hear the guns clicking i hear the <laughs> clips going i hear everything being pulled it sounds like loadouts going in and that I'm is exactly what's going to happen i believe right now it is going to be control yep that is going to be it and this is going to be potentially the final series on i believe high rise 
for the finale, hopefully, if you are a Saints fan. Utility being thrown out first, and as we've been saying, St. Clair, a very good team when it comes to respawn game modes. Zarin being the first one off the board, but KB looking to refrag. And it's going to be interesting to see which team tries to play for kills, which team tries to play for control. It's just going to be a big question mark, but it's all going to be answered soon as Eastern Michigan jump out to what I thought was going to be an early lead in lives, but St. Clair trying to get right back. St. Clair doing an amazing job right now, trying so hard here to find something. Managed to find a kill there, looking for another. They have control of A, they're getting a little bit of progress with only 50 seconds left. They need to get a point and soon. It's not looking great for them. Zarin gets another kill. Might start to be a good scene. And it looks like they're going to try and do two points at once and really split Eastern Michigan's choices here. Sam and Gates get two kills there. KB going to get one right back. He's going to fall down to Anxious. Now it's looking to go this way of Eastern Michigan. They have two on both points right now, or one on both points right now. And it looks like Eastern Michigan's just shredding them down in the kills, but it looks like the lives are still on the side of St. Clair. Right, and I mean, as, no, they're on the side oh, of Eastern right, Michigan right it's now. The so Eastern colors. Michigan's <laughs> doing really, really good um, so far. St. Clair just having a little bit of troubles. Obviously right now, Brandon's struggling a little bit to get it going. And with the time ticking down with a 10 life, oh sorry, with a three life difference now down to a two life difference, you have to think unless St. Clair can get some sort of miraculous trade coming through, and however, there's going to be the first one. Can they find the pick? No, that's going to be detrimental. But with a one pick lead, can St. Clair tie it? Can they get the lead on lives? The timer has stopped. It's going to be 15 to 16, and now they just try to have to find a pick right now. Anything will go. Anything will be taken. KB, I believe, finding one, but it's going to get traded back. This engagement on the small tower is going to be it with the timer being held down. St. Clair not winning that one, not winning the next either. It should be, in theory, a Rochester win on this Eastern control Michigan. point. Oh, sorry, not Rochester, <laughs> yeah, Eastern. sorry. Eastern Michigan <laughs> Here we are. this point. It's a long day. And, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, folks. It has been a long day. But there's 10 the seconds game. left. But there's 10 seconds left. And right now, St. Clair is battling back. 10-9. to 9. It's going to be 10-12. to 12. They just have to find two more, but with another pick coming through, it seems like Eastern Michigan might have the trades in lives that they just need. It's just so, so dominant. They got one point. There's just so much going on. And right now, as it's just down to one point difference, the next lead will mean everything. And it's going to be Eastern Michigan to find yet another pick. And as the timer goes, the control is found. A minute left to play. The lives are now tied with seven on each side. It's going to have to be teams that are responding quick. St. Clair has the lead. Do they have the same? Yes, they do. Brandon on a five streak. He needs to try to stay. And that is going to be it. A comeback wow. from the depths. I thought it was all done. I wrote them off. But that is not how St. Clair finished that control point. They get on the top of the board. They stay on seven lives. And they will finish out strong. Good, attacking a control on this point is so hard. It's such an uphill battle. Because the enemy def defense has the high ground. And those points are so open. So you just get sprayed down. You get <laughs> knocked down right, before, right as you're trying to enter through these sight lines but props to St. Clair from being able to bring that back from looking like nothing and just whittled away at those points and managed to cap one and then the other played amazingly now it's up to Eastern Michigan to make their attack here Saints are holding the long sight lines they're creeping up holding the weird off angles here on this rope but I think he's trying to attack it he managed to get the oh kill out of it what? from the Brandon, crossbar Brandon, there. Brandon, wow. Brandon, stop what are we doing we're just playing monkey bars and then all of a sudden we're putting a pistol in someone's head what is this out of you and now St. Clair are going to come out with the early lead finding the first six they're absolutely melting Eastern Michigan and now Eastern Michigan has to try to find a rebuttal but Priestley is going to opt not to let them do so he finds the first pick reloading needs to swap probably the secondary no gets the reload off finds yet another such a beautiful play st Clair pretty much spawn camping right now on control and it's going to be the trophies to go down key is they don't want to get burned by any flashes yeah they're doing an amazing job on defense right or defense right now as eastern michigan hasn't gotten any ticks on the control blunt but that might quickly change as brandon with another tk have... on the nade <laughs> you have a guy on there that's but three that's it yeah, that is three, three that's tks insane. in the series yeah, it's, a, it's a crazy series right now but it looks like saints are still just totally in control right now not letting anybody even touch 
Gods. Look at the kill feed. It's all green right. in the I mean, kill this feed. One, this one, this one's over. Difference of nine, 9.6 seconds left. It doesn't matter. The seconds are ticking down. I mean, honestly, it wouldn't even surprise me right now if St. Clair gets the last, like, 10 in the last couple of seconds. It's not going to happen. Just the way the game was going. <laughs> it, it was an absolute roll. And right now, St. Clair is looking on match point to their final match of the series that they need in order to take the 3-0 sweep. The thing is, we saw how hard fought that first attacking control was. Of course. It's going to be another one. So this is it. This is for the series point. This is what they've been playing for. If they can win it all here, this is going to be it. And Eastern Michigan needs to have an amazing defense. Maybe they can learn the monkey bar strat. Maybe that's the secret sauce. That's just it. That's just <laughs> it. That's what started the tempo. The second that kill went down, their mental was, was shocked. It was over. <laughs> so <laughs> now we got to see how Eastern Michigan comes back from this. But it's such a long road ahead. Not only do you need to Look reverse sweep on control. Oh, it died. <laughs> not only do you have to reverse sweep on control. You then have to reverse sweep on games too. And as these picks go off the board, St. Clair with a big advantage of two so far. It seems like they have the early advantage. You gotta hope that they are going to continue going here. I believe the cruise missile that was That's finding insane. no one, but Zarin able to get on the board priestly as well. Every life that goes down right now is just kind of a timing, time ticker, time bomb. I don't know where my English is going. Hey, it's all about time. It's There's just been such one a minute long left. stream. One minute Another left. Another cruise missile. A Fred missile again. This one, Brandon Willie elect to kill his own teammate. Is that a second Only one? Only time There's will two. tell. It's going to be the Four. double kill. Team on wipe. two team wipes on two Pred missiles. I honestly thought Brendan was going to aim for one of his teammates again, but you really can't do that right now. Let's be honest. The life count was too close. You don't want to throw and give them the mental reset. So Brendan right now just kind of sitting on this tanker. He just needs to have this high angle. Should be able to find one as the cross comes over. Taking a lot of damage though, and he's actually going to be shut down. His aim was a little off there, unable to handle the recoil, and now A is the last one. Only two ticks away, two minutes. They have a minute per tick to do. It's all looking a little bit dicey right yeah, now, but KB, he's taking control right back, but dies to a grenade. Team kill again for Priestley. He's what? landing those grenades what like it's wrong? nobody's business like, what's here. What's going on with St. Clair right now? Like, what? The, don't get me wrong they're winning it's great but i've never seen a team kill in any of their series let alone four in the same one <laughs> this is ridiculous the saints they don't even know who's on their team and who's not at they're this just point. looking for Trophy blood system going down classic cod players there's no strategy involved i'm just joking obviously run and gun but right now on the side of st Clair, it seems like they're just shooting anything that moves blowing up anything that moves including their own teammates as the lives go down and as St. Clair captures all zones, it is going to be a win. 3-0, they take the 3-0 sweep in games as well. That's going to be the series and that is going to be the last series of this game day being wrapped up. And what an amazing series it was. Just total Saints dominance all the way through Eastern Michigan. They had their moments, but you got to hand it to the Saints. Look at that, 21 and 11, 20 and 8, 18 and 8. And Zarin there, Phil-in still did amazing. Didn't get any team kills I must add but <laughs> you still that played KB? amazing he had 17 non-traded kills wow that's right? insane like St. Clair does such a good job of trading their kills back but Eastern Michigan just <laughs> never had the chance to come back from that I mean an absolutely dominant performance by the Saints and that one was going to wrap up our game day. Yeah, what an amazing game day it has been. The first Academy Overwatch game against St. John. That was as close as it can get. And they still managed to win it out. And then uh, we had our first COD game, which was very, very good as well. It was very back and forth. But the Saints well, proved their dominance like we just saw. Even with the sub, they still played at the top of the line. Don't even talk to me about our varsity series on Overwatch on game two. That game on King's Row, that might be the coolest game of Overwatch I've ever casted and probably ever will for a very long time. I mean, I cannot think of a better ending than that. However, as the stream does come to an end, we need to talk about uh, some things. First of all, a big shout out to everybody in the back room. Without them, we could do absolutely nothing. I want to give the big shout out to Tommy on director. He was directing the show tonight, so if it went well, 
put it on him. Amanda as well in the back room. TJ and Mr. Dan Banner as our observers as well. And I believe, am I missing anyone? Yes, I am. It's Aiden as well on the observer. Aiden's kind of a new face here, but he's done such a good job on the observing. So big shout out to you, Aiden. And, uh, you know, assuming you're probably going to be observing Siege on Thursday, can't wait to see you there. I also want to give out, sorry. You know what? Oh. You go ahead. You're, oh. you're, you're doing good. Just go, oh, thank go you. for it. Go I was just going to shout out tomorrow's match. We have yeah. COD. I believe it's Academy and Varsity tomorrow. So you don't want to miss that. So make sure to follow our socials for the exact times and dates. We keep up to date on everything up there. I believe we have Facebook. We have TikTok. We have Instagram. We have everywhere you could possibly want to follow on socials. We post there daily. And we have Academy Valorant as well tomorrow. It's looking to be very, very good. So... It's going to be an amazing day, another amazing game day tomorrow. And we can't forget to thank our sponsors, HyperX, Tim Horton, Subway, St. Clair SRC, and the St. Clair College Alumni Association. And we also have to thank our viewers. So thank you very much for joining us for another amazing game day. We're going to have even more down the line very, very soon. And do you have anything I want to, do you want to say, Patrick, before I close this completely out? Honestly, I think I've said too much here. I think <laughs> I've said too much. My voice is absolutely spent. That was an amazing broadcast. Just want to say thank you to all the previous people we just shouted out. Thank you to the ones watching at home as well. We love you guys. And uh, that's going to wrap it up. It's been me, Patrick Smoke Chambers, joined by Matthias Matthias Talbot, and we'll see you tomorrow with more great St. Clair action.